special report on the Masters. I'm Ted Emmerich. Tiger Woods sliding closer and closer to the cut line after bogeys at 11 and 12. Woods at the tail end of Amen Corner trying to turn things around. Yeah, really a beautifully played pitch shot. Did a similar effort back at the eighth to make birdie. So Tiger a little bit down the slope. Got to be careful not to hit this too firmly. Tiger putter goes back, ball up to the cup and into the bottom. Nice up and down birdie at 13 for Tiger Woods as he acknowledges the patrons. He'll head to 14, two over for the tournament. Mark Carnival to call on Sirius XM. Important putt for Woods. Now safely inside the cut line at plus two. That is seven off the lead that belongs to Scotty Scheffler, who is five under. You're listening to coverage of the 2022 Masters on Westwood One. The CFOs that get it, get it. The CFOs that don't, don't. Behold the CFO, the chief financial officer. This isn't some bean counter. Today's CFO is critical to the strategy, growth, and profitability of the business. But in growing companies, there are two kinds of CFOs. One who's struggling to keep up with spreadsheets everywhere. Manual processes, errors, and lack of visibility into the numbers. It takes weeks to close the books. And one who's on top of their game. Automated reports, inventory, e-commerce, and HR flow into the financial model seamlessly. In Insights coming with a click of a button. This CFO uses NetSuite by Oracle with visibility and control of your financials, inventory, HR, planning, and budgeting. NetSuite is everything you need to grow all in one place. That's why NetSuite is the number one cloud financial system used by over 29,000 growing businesses. Like I said, the CFOs that get it, get it. The CFOs that don't, don't. Head to NetSuite.com slash golf for a special one-of-a-kind financing offer. NetSuite.com slash golf. NetSuite.com slash golf. Overcast skies at Augusta National, and the wind is whipping gusts of up to 30 miles per hour. Let's check the leaderboard, sponsored by NetSuite. Head to netsuite.com slash golf for a special one-of-a-kind financing offer. That's netsuite.com slash golf. Would Scotty Scheffler be ready to play in the Masters as the top-ranked player in the world? The answer so far is a resounding yes. Scheffler, five under with a two-shot lead. He's two under today after a birdie at 12. Charles Schwartzel, Sung J.M., Shane Lowry, and Joaquin Neiman, all three under, two back. Lowry opened with a bogey at one. Five birdies, no bogey since. He's got the round of the day working. Lowry is four under through 16. Harold Varner III, Dustin Johnson, Kevin Na, and Hideki Matsuyama, all two under, three back. Stuart Sink with an ace at 16. Sink's son, Reagan, on the bag. And today is Reagan Sink's birthday, but that will do it for Sink's Masters. Seven over par, he'll miss the cut. From Augusta, I'm Ted Emmerich, Westwood One Sports. Live from the Harmon Solar Studios in Scottsdale. This is KQFN Tempe. Also transmitting on K25CD Phoenix at 99.3 FM. And K240U Bottle Hills at 95.9 FM. All right, people, settle down. Because it's time. Time for what? Showtime. When does it start? Right now. Three, two, one. Let's get on with the show. Let's do it. Here on the Daily Blender, I'm your good friend, your radio pal, Jeffrey O'Brien, alongside Randy White. We got Keon Rose in the control room, and you guys are on the Fanatic text line, 888-368-1580. Broadcasting live in the Harmon Solar Studios in Scottsdale, and the Berg is right out the gate with a uh, congratulations, Keon. Stupid Yankees. Yeah, not, not yeah. my team either, so I don't know what to tell you. The uh, Boston Red Sox uh, went down to the Yankees today, so... Well, uh, Berg's going to be a little grumpy about it, and especially grumpy towards any Yankee fan who may be, uh, you know, w- within his uh, speaking distance. Mm, mm. It's understandable. Yeah, I thought, I, we, I also, I thought uh, we established yesterday Keon is no longer uh, associated with the Yankees. But yeah, I still don't yeah. like the Red Sox, so that's yeah. fine. Well, yeah. Uh, well, see, there you go. Right there. That just shows you. Uh, I only like the Red Sox when they're beating the Yankees. That's when I love the Red Sox. Yeah. Outside of that, I have no opinion about them. Why do you not like the Red Sox? Uh, there, Keon. I, don't know. I just never let go of everything about them. I just don't like them. As a Yankee fan, no, I just don't like them. Well, they're not the team I hate the most. As who's a national team, you hate the most the Mets. Okay, I hate the Mets. Because I also hate when you were a Yankees fan. Does uh, no, I, J- Jacobs know that you hate the Mets? He does. He this, actually uh, was razzing me this morning because they beat the Nationals. We're in the, the Nationals and the Mets are in a division together. Uh, and Bruce ouch. Jacobs, Bruce Jacobs was letting me know that they lost which I already knew, which he knew that I already knew, and he was still letting me have it. In was the he hallway. texting you with the no. uh, with, with his flip phone? or no, he... no, I was in this morning um, 
do, doing some training and stuff. And I, and I bumped into him in the parking lot actually. Mm. Uh, and yeah, and then he was, he was like, Hey, nice, uh, nice game yesterday. Huh? And I tried to like, I was already in my car. So I was trying to just back away. Like, I don't, I don't want to talk about it. Yeah. But he, he was having fun talking about it and letting me know that the Mets beat the nationals. So mm. If you ever get uh, a text from Bruce Jacobs, just know he he doesn't have a smartphone. So that means an angry text from him <laughs> takes extra effort because you got to push those buttons until you get the right letter. Move on. Yeah. Hit so those buttons until you get the right letter. Move really on. Really angry when he sends you an angry text. Oh he yeah, really yeah. means it when that happens. Yeah. yeah. So uh, all right. So I made a huge mistake today. I made a uh, just a. I didn't realize it because I don't know any better. I don't know any better. But uh, I don't know if you know this or not. Golf on TV, mm. it can make you sleepy. Yeah, yeah, good. Well, I got all kind of tired listening to that. I was watching the uh, the Masters there on the TV, and uh, Keon calls me up, and I'm just like, what? Oh, my God. I was, like, feeling great earlier. I was yep. like, all right, let's take on the day. Let's do this thing. And then I yeah. just watched about 20 minutes of golf, and I'm like, uh, yeah, you can't do that. Uh, you can't do that. There's uh, there's some sort of uh, medicinal uh, effect that takes shape uh, when Jim Nance starts talking. Uh, Vern Lundquist, if you get him, give him a microphone, it's instant Zville. So like, I mean, you got to be careful. Got to like be careful. Audio tryptophan, right oh, yeah. there, man. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but I did uh, get watch. Uh, Tiger's having a heck of a day today. Uh, he's having a hard time just staying above that cut line. I. He's put a, a couple of decent holes together here just a, a little bit ago. But, uh, yeah, he's tied for, who cares, 20th or something like that. Uh, or at least he was a little bit ago. I don't know where he's now. Tied, tied for, he's T20 right now. Okay. Yeah. So he'll probably make the cut, but it's going to be by the skin of his teeth. He's, you know, he's got, like, some great stuff, and then he's got some garbage stuff. Uh, even, you know, some of the guys who are killing it, I saw, I think Matsuyama put it in the drink just a minute ago, but oh, yeah. Yeah. I don't know why today would be different other than the fatigue factor. So if, uh, you know, it'll be interesting to hear what he has to say, not, not that he's going to show you much anyway, because he likes, uh, I don't know what it is. Here's the thing. Help me out. You're only golfing with three guys. Nobody's really watching you. None of the other golfers. So is there head games? Is there any need for head games? Because he doesn't show any pain on his face. He's got, yeah. I mean, he does. Uh, yesterday, he did uh, throw an F bomb out there uh, when something didn't go his way. And then one of the Dustins or Justins or whoever just a little bit ago dropped an F bomb. It's all on cable, so nobody's getting in trouble for it. But mm -hmm. I'm just like, well, these guys have some potty mouths out there. Some oh, yeah. Filthy, yeah. Filthy. When, when Tiger was much younger, uh, he, he would, uh, he would stone cold you. If you were playing in his, in his pairing, uh, he wouldn't talk to you. He wouldn't look at you. He wouldn't face toward you. Uh, he was in a zone and, and he would just play his game and he would, he, he wasn't out there, uh, to tell jokes and, and crack wise. He was out there to kick your ass mm -hmm. and to kick the course's ass. So, but nowadays I understand. And, and they were talking about this earlier this morning. Uh, he's eased up quite a bit. He's, he's more approachable now. Uh, he'll throw out the occasional good shot, you know, things like that. He's no longer, he doesn't just, uh, you know, I did see though on, on the, on the back nine here where he's been, uh, he's trying to get back in this thing and he's had a rough day. Like you said, Jeff Co. Uh, and it's been, it's been wonderful to watch him play, but, uh, he, he, he there, there was one where, uh, Joaquin Neiman was, uh, was uh, standing over the putt and Tiger wasn't even looking at him. He, he's like, Tiger was looking way over here somewhere. It wasn't even acknowledging there was a putt going on, you know? <laughs> and so, he's fighting for his life right now. He just got a par on 15 yeah. and uh, he's well, he uh, needs some birdies. He, he's got, well, he put had two in a row. He had two in yeah. a row on 13 and 14, but between him now, uh, you know, in the end of this match, uh, three, uh, three holes, and he's got to hit those just, I mean, it's not about beating anybody at this moment. It's just about not just, getting cut. Yeah. And, and uh, you know, with the uh, minus five, I mean, the cut line is uh, usually 11 strokes behind the leader uh, plus ties. So uh, we'll have to see where it ends up. Uh, Scotty Scheffler has come out of nowhere. Kevin Na is starting to play uh, some really good golf. Matsuyama nah. got warm there for a while, uh, but he's kind of fallen back a little bit. Yeah. Well, I've already lost two of my guys to uh, the cutty cut oh. cut. 
Uh, Shatuffle is gone. He yeah. did, did not make the cut line. And Bernhard Langer, which we knew was a long shot, yeah. uh, he did not make it. I had him for a top 10 finish. Uh, at some texter's uh, suggestion, yeah. who I forgot. Yeah. If I what, forgot was it, was who it, you are, just keep. I was going to say keep forgotten so I don't get uh, grumpy, yeah. but I'll never be like that. If somebody gives me a tip and I take it and it doesn't go my way, I'm never going to get mad at nobody. But Bernhard Langer, gone. Shuffle, gone. But I still have Scheffler, can't lay, because it's a hilarious thing. <laughs> and, uh, of course, Tiger Tiger Woods, y'all. And, uh, you know, I, I don't know. The, what does yesterday and today mean other than making the cut? Does it does anything uh, that's happening now matter towards the final result of winning the Masters? Well, you, you can't win the tournament in the first two days, but you sure as hell can lose it, mm-hmm. as uh, as exemplified by uh, some of the guys that uh, we I, that we thought I thought that was going to be you know favored to win, but uh, you can certainly lose it. No, in the first couple of days, especially in a major event like this, today today is probably the hardest day because the uh, the pin placement. Uh, you've really got to be concentrating on on uh, making good plays, good shots. You don't want to put yourself in trouble. So the first two days is just, you're right, Jeffrey. It's like staying ahead of the cut line, uh, making sure you're there. Because Saturday, tomorrow, uh, it'll be a much easier approach for these guys. They call it moving day. And you'll see a lot of scoring going on tomorrow. Plus today, they had a lot of wind to deal with. There were gusts up to 30 miles an hour. It was a... Mm. Uh, 65 been earlier by, by the Over, way yeah overcast tiger hit a really good shot at 16 just now. nice just, like on the money it, it's going to be a really short putt for him i don't on know money is the right way to put it i got money on him i want my money <laughs> <laughs> get that on the money so uh all right so the scores from yesterday and today do not get factored into the scores for saturday and sunday so it's like starting over fresh saturday morning or no, do the scores know, no, no. from the last few the days scores- yeah, you, you you carry the score for all four days. Yes. Okay, uh, so uh, that means that Scheffler, uh, you know, with uh, now he's six under par. Uh, he's got uh, yeah, he's just kind of killing it then, right? I mean that that means he's doing great. Yeah. So if if it remains like this, let's say uh, Scheffler ends up uh, doing this, everybody's just kind of frozen in time, and the scores are like this. Scheffler's your leader in the clubhouse right now, heading into day three. So he'll uh, he'll be in a. Uh, They'll reshuffle the groups, uh, for example. Uh, Tiger will no longer be with, uh, uh, you know, Joaquin, uh, Joaquin? Uh, Neiman. He's been uh, killing it, by the way. Neiman's been playing him. He's- yeah, but he started to fall apart when they entered uh, 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 Amen Corner back there. When they got to the 14th, he overdrove the green. He got in some real trouble. I think he three-putted. Uh, that was bad for him. But, uh, but yes, I, they will reshuffle the field and re-kind re of uh, – Put the uh, the groupings back together, and uh, and we'll see where they go. And uh, and what'll happen is uh, Scheffler will be one. He'll be uh, if he's in the lead, he'll be in the last group out uh, on the day. He'll he'll go out in the afternoon. So all right. Well, uh, now I get it. Now I understand, and uh, we'll keep you up to date on what happens with the uh, with the Masters. Uh, we've got updates a couple times an hour, and. Uh, occasionally we'll take a look uh, Keon's got the can- the, uh, the TV screen up in there. So he'll keep us uh, uh, apprised of anything interesting that happens. I'm, I'm pulling for him to make the cut, you know, listen, if, and, and honestly, I don't care about the $3 I've got on it. I'd love to win $69. I don't expect to win that. I just want to see this guy uh, do well. I, and really, I think no matter what happens after he makes the cut, you, you can't say a damn thing to him after what he's been through and to get to where he is now, what you're looking at is boy, is he going to be ready for next year? Because he still, he still has it. He still well, has uh, it. Yes. I mean, he still has the physical tools. His body is no, I mean, the, 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 the greatness he, of the game. He still has. Yeah, I mean, he's, uh, he's not out. He's not out of, uh, out of contention by any means, but I mean, uh, for the way these guys were talking about, I mean, all these, uh, all these, uh, they were starstruck. I, I, and look, I, I just think it's wrong uh, to, to expect Tiger Woods to go out there and win 508 days after he almost had his leg amputated. Sorry. You don't expect it, but you should sure hope for it. Well, I'm sure happy he's playing the way he is. Uh, so good for him. Good for him. Let's get to the text line, 888-368-1580. Fish Tank says the Espen broadcast was so bad last night. They spent more time talking about Joey Votto uh, talking about a tattoo and the $151 burger in Atlanta, then calling yeah. the play-by-play last night. It was awful. So glad today's game is going to be with our home announcers. 
Yeah. Uh, he's talking about his Atlanta Braves. Boogie says Tigers are tied for the best record in the entire Major League Baseball. <laughs> they won a game. Yeah, they mm-hmm. they, they they won their game. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Randy, can you pour me six shots of a hundred proof uh, Knob Creek Rye? Says good oh, cat. Been at okay. home with a sick three year old and watching nonstop Paw Patrol. Oh boy, dear God, oh, help boy. me. Oh, oh boy. boy. Yeah, there's three for you. Let me get the rest of them here. Yeah. I'm looking forward to the internal affairs uh, episode of Paw Patrol. You know, <laughs> some stuff's going to go down. I uh, lost Toby says, best news I saw today, Joe Buck not announcing the World Series. Yeah. Who are they going to yeah, have for that? Uh, probably Kevin Burkhart. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Because Burkhart. If no, he's the number the one guy for Fox now, it'll probably be Burkhart. Uh, let's see. Tiger Paws says, it's supposed to be very windy at Augusta today. Or because he could read that a couple different ways, how she said it. It could be, it's supposed to be very windy at Augusta today. Or it's supposed to be very windy at Augusta today. I just mm. don't know. I, yeah. And I don't mean to be weird, but when a woman texts, uh, I, you, mm. it, that inflection could go either way. You know, yeah. guy texts, you read it as is. It's supposed to be very windy at Augusta today. But when a woman... <sighs> Yeah, I, there's always a sigh first in my oh, head. No. It's supposed to be windy. Uh, Swazman says, my bet, Mickelson will not make the cut. No. Perfect. No. Uh, let's see. <laughs> jo- Lost Toby says, Joe Davis is taking uh, Joe Buck's spot, actually. Joe Davis? I have no idea who Joe Davis is. Uh, same here. Yeah. Senior Wake and Bake says, yep, I hit greens every morning myself. All right. Swazman says, kids can handle the pressure on Sunday. Tiger and MJ were the top two athletes and showmen. Everybody wanted to watch. Kids, meaning anybody young on the PGA Tour. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Charlie Boy says, hey, guys. Happy uh, belated anniversary to you and your lovely wife. Uh, thank you. Uh, he says, I'm attending the Suns viewing party at Footprint Center tonight. Excellent. Okay. Excellent. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right. Are they playing the Mormons or are they playing the Kings? That's the Mormons tonight, right? I thought it was a jazz tonight. Yeah, that's what I said. 888-368-1580. Uh, all right, so uh, let's talk about what happened last night. Uh, of course, the uh, Coyotes. Oh, Lordy. that. Uh, mm. Yeah, we're not going to talk about that. Although, I, I do want to talk about the, uh, the coach's statement. Uh, coach of the uh, Coyotes says, we did a lot of good things. If you look at the score, you might think the game went out of our hands quickly. But if you look at the actual pace, the chances we had, the possessions we had, we are frustrated. But I'd say this is a step in the right direction. Everything's great. Okay, he didn't say the everything's great thing, but I'm just like, mm-hmm. maybe sometimes it's better not to say things. You know what I'm I saying? Don't know. I, I don't know because it would be very easy in a season like this uh, for the coach to get up there and not say anything at all and the team to be very discouraged or – Uh, to have the coach go up there and say things like, well, you know, we're making progress in this area. We're doing this well. Uh, Even though the score was five to one and we got our asses handed to us, uh, we still did a lot of things well. I mean, I'd rather hear that as a player uh, in the press than, well, we got our asses kicked. No, on to the next game. And especially if, you know, uh, and and I didn't get to see the game last night, but if there were some shots that went off the post or, you know, if some weird, some fluky stuff happened for a couple of those goals or you just things that normally work for you don't work for you, I can understand you saying that too. I know. I just, it always hits me a little bit weird. I mean, saying we did a lot of good things, but you know, I guess the way it was worded just sort of caught me a little bit because I, I listen, if you lose the game, save what you just said there for the locker room he probably but, did share that in the locker but, room. but it, out there say yeah well i feel like we had some progress in some areas but the uh, end result wasn't great we're disappointed moving on i i just I, just the way he put this statement kind of mm-hmm. didn't yeah. feel right it, and it I depends because certain coaches know too how to what level their team is listening to the media listening to the noise so hearing your coach say that on the outside might might reinforce some some positivity and some coaches also criticize in the media too because the, they they want that critique to get back to players so if you can play the media like that fine but uh you know be smart about it the jet says hey guys any idea what's going on uh the 101 in the west valley bumper to bumper stop traffic right now by northern um no we don't do traffic so we, we don't know so i guess somebody could look it up if they wanted not it mm-hmm. Not it. Not it. Oh, Keon, you're really? last. Really? Yep. Bring up a traffic uh, map. Uh, we'll figure it out for you, Jet. Jet also says, 
Seth Beer is my new favorite Diamondbacks player. Watched him play a few weeks ago and in spring training, and uh, I learned he came from Reno. This dude's amazing. He did it on National Beer Day. Yeah, yeah by now, everybody's talked the crap out of this. We get it. Uh, yesterday, we told you it was National Beer Day. He hits it. Beer, uh, a walk-off home run to uh, completely surprise everybody and obliterate the Padres on that. Uh, some uh, just... I, amazing pitching by the Padres right up until then. <laughs> you know, I mean, that's just, if you're the manager of the Padres, that's just like all of a sudden this sinking pit in your stomach feeling, right, Randy? Yeah. I, you'd, you'd hate to see a good game where your pitching staff has held the other team down and, and uh, you kept them at bay and uh, the entire game, it was like a, a no hit game they had going into the, uh, the ninth inning there, and then the other team wins uh, on a walk off, uh, scoring four runs. I mean, this is uh, this is something that the Padres. It's the first game; they'll just have to put it out of their minds. Show up tonight and and uh, and uh, go after it again. Try not to look back on this; uh, just move forward. The I like the six per- inning no hitter from you, Darvish. Well, and and that's it. Uh, that's a very good outing for you, Darvish. He went six strong innings and held Wasted. the team at bay. Yeah, he, and- he went. He held the uh, Diamondbacks at bay. To make things worse uh, for uh, the team and uh, to make things worse for that manager uh, and and to make things worse for the pitcher who gave up that home run, this was, uh, yeah, this was Beer's 13th time at bat in the big league. Yeah, he's he's been been a minor leaguer. He's come up and down several times like – like you mentioned early on, he, he used to play uh, for Reno, but they've uh, they've uh, started him. He's been on the opening day roster. And look, if this kid keeps hitting like this, he can stay here. Uh, I don't know what happens next. It's a, a four game series with the Padres, and yeah. uh, I tell you, it's going to be tough. So uh, do not expect uh, the same great uh, things every night, yeah. but you hope for it. You, you know what's crazy. I, I was on the CBS Sports website, and I have the thing pulled up. Wait, you were supposed to be on the traffic site. I, I also pulled that up, too. But yeah, hold yeah, on yeah. just one second. Diamondbacks 4, Padres 2. But CBS Sports was expecting the Diamondbacks to lose, so they still say 0-1, and, and the Padres still say 1-0. and Somebody oh, funny. <laughs> expected the Diamondbacks to lose. I yeah. expected it last night. We were going to bed, and my wife says, hey, who's, uh, who's winning that pet ball game? I'm like, oh, yeah, the Padres got it. The Diamondbacks have nothing. Uh, you know, we're, we went to bed with me thinking, well, there goes the game one. Woke up the next day extremely surprised. Yep. That was great. So whoever worked as, for CBS didn't fix their uh, mistake. As, as was I. I. I was very surprised to hear about it. I, I, was, uh, I was getting texts last night uh, long after I went to bed. And, uh, yeah, I heard about this all the way from Kuwait City. My son, who's uh, deployed with the Air Force, is hitting me up with text. Dad, 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 Diamondbacks are going to do it. They, they just hit a home run. They, you know, so uh, eh, congratulations to the Diamondbacks. Yeah, listen, uh, great way to start the season. Let's see what happens next. Again, enjoy them when you get them. All right, must take a break. When we come back, we will keep talking. We got some more Major League Baseball to go, and uh, we will talk about your Phoenix Suns. Uh, LeBron has made an announcement. We'll talk about that, too. It's the Daily Blender here on 1580, The Fanatic. This is Brent Musburger's action update on 1580 and 99.3, The Fanatic. Heads up, sports bettors. Right now, you can try VSIN all access free for 30 days with no credit card required. Visit vsin.com slash free month to sign up now. After getting a walk-off win yesterday, the Diamondbacks are back at it, hosting the Padres tonight, the pitching matchup. Merrill Kelly will get the start for the Diamondbacks, while the Padres go with Sean Manaya. The Padres are minus 136 favorites for tonight's game, where the Diamondbacks would pay out at plus 116. The over-under has been set at nine runs, the spread at a run and a half. Phoenix Suns basketball, they've been faltering a little bit here down the stretch as they get set for the postseason. Final weekend of the regular season, they played the Jazz tonight. Utah favored by two and a half, the over-under at 228. For the latest odds all the time, visit vcin.com. I'm Matt Pauley on Arizona's sports betting station, 1580 The Fanatic. 
From the Augusta National Golf Club, Westwood One Sports presents this special report on the Masters. I'm Ted Emmerich. Seems like Scotty Scheffler has been near the top of the leaderboard in every tournament he's played in this year. He has won three times. The former Texas Longhorn was fortunate with his approach at 13 here in the second round. Well right at the green, but right near a photographer's area with still a great angle to the green. Scheffler chipped onto the green, and he had a look at birdie. Just going to work a little bit down the slope from left to right, working up to the cup, gets in the right edge. And that is a beautiful birdie here at 13 for Scotty Scheffler. You have to be lucky, obviously, to get the number one and win golf tournaments. But that was a lucky break. Scheffler now six under with that birdie here at 13. Mark Carnabell, the call on Sirius XM. So Scheffler, the number one player in the world, has built a three-shot lead. He's six under par. You're listening to coverage of the 2022 Masters on Westwood One. This is a metaphor for your business's journey. Sometimes it feels like you're going 100 miles an hour, barely keeping up. But to cruise through challenges, you need someone who's right there with you. That's what Dell Technologies Advisors do. They have the Windows PCs and tech advice you need to get past whatever's in front of you and get where you want to go. Call an advisor today at 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL. A start to a simpler experience with Windows 11 Pro. Your happiest spring starts with Lowe's because Spring Fest is happening now to help you find everything you need this season at a great low price. Come on into Lowe's right now and get five bags of premium mulch for only $10 and keep the spring savings going with $100 off select Ego self-propelled lawnmowers. Create a season full of happiness. Lowe's, home to any budget, home to any possibility. Mulch offered Lowe's.com, quantity limited, 25 units per item per transaction. Excludes Alaska and Hawaii. Selection varies by location. While supplies last, ballot 4 7 to 4 13. No Friday fun at Augusta for Jordan Spieth. A triple bogey at 12, a double bogey at 18. Spieth outside the projected cut line at six over. He has never missed the cut at the Masters. Let's check the leaderboard sponsored by Dell. For your small business needs, call a Dell Technologies advisor today at 877-ASK-DELL. Scotty Scheffler, another Dallas native, on top at six under par. He's three under today, through 14 holes in the last group here in the second round. At three under, three back, Charles Schwartzel, the 2011 Masters champion. Sung J.M., Shane Lowry, who just carted the round of the day of four under 68 to move to minus three overall. Also at three under, Joaquin Neiman and Hideki Matsuyama. Tiger Woods is battling at the 15-time major champ with birdies at 13 and 14. His birdie put it 16 moments ago, turned left at the last second. Woods is one over par, seven off the lead. From Augusta, I'm Ted Emmerich, Westwood One Sports. Arizona Rattlers football. <laughs> Exclusively on 1580 and 99.3 The Fanatic. And at 1580thefanatic.com. Oh, yeah, I like that. Tune in to hear every home game live. Let's go, boys. Don't miss a second of all the high-paced action as the Rattlers chase another world championship. Hey, we're going to win. It's going to be on us. Rattlers football on 1580 and 99.3 The Fanatic. Or streaming live at 1580thefanatic.com. <laughs> Blender here on 1580, the fanatic, Shooter McGavin, of course I know. Just because I don't say his name doesn't know doesn't mean I don't know who he is. He says, Jeffrey, don't you know Bob Melvin is the Padres manager, former Arizona Diamondbacks manager? Yeah, I know. And, and the, the, I'm sorry, Melvin is, to me, uh, one of those names you don't hear as a first name anymore. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it's not just because of those stupid air conditioning commercials, but... Uh, you, when's the last time you you met a kid, like a like a five year old kid? Hey, what's your name, Melvin? No, you haven't. The, nobody's naming their kids Melvin anymore. But uh, yeah, I mean, so what? Which, I don't know what your point is, Shooter McGavin. Hey, I just don't care to say somebody's name. I'm not going to say it. Eight 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 three six eight fifteen eighty. Go ahead, Cam. Yeah, uh, uh, the uh, West Valley one hundred and one accident that has everything all shut down, basically. Uh, un. What, immovable vehicle right now in the HOV lane. That's it. Uh, You're just a car and, stuck in the HOV uh, lane. It's it's, but it's not moving. I guess so. They're trying Still, to. Still, there's a bunch of other lanes. Remove it, and uh, there's another <laughs> accident <laughs> further up the road. That's uh, uh, another just not moving car. So, all right. Well, there you go. Happening. That's what's happening. Crash blocking the ramp there on the mm -hmm. westbound uh, 101 near Bell Road. So traffic's not really your strong point, then, huh, Kim? <laughs> no. 
What, yeah. Whatever made you think that when I was like, well, oh, not maybe, it, and then you gave it to me. No, you said <laughs> not it last. So so, right. so that made it my strong suit all of a sudden? No, it just maybe next time you need to be a little quicker, don't you? You know? <laughs> oh, not, not even not it. Not it. it. See, there you go again. Keon. Okay, you not it, it. But, okay, I'm not going to say not it for not nothing, it. though. Not it. See, again, you had so much time it, right there, Keon. Okay, but what, what are we not eating it for? It doesn't matter. If somebody goes, not it, you go not right it. away. See, Randy knows the rules. You got to know the rules. I mean, I know the rules. Not but it. If, if not there's, it. If See, there's, again, you just got skunked. Uh, I'm, I'm not trying on purpose because there's <laughs> nothing to try it for. What are we doing this for? You need practice, obviously. You know, you need practice. So, uh, okay, I got to... <laughs> I, uh, thank you, George. George sent me a picture of the uh, immovable object in the HOV lane. It's actually a crash. It's not just a. Uh, yeah, is uh, well, there, there's a you crash. You made it sound like there was a car broken. One was a crash, and the the other one further down the road is a vehicle that wasn't moving. That's what it says on the traffic map on the A dot traffic map. Sure, that's what you'd like us to think. Eight 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 three six eight fifteen eighty. <laughs> Blissful Hayes says, happy Friday, Blender, and fourth dimension. Hey, Randy, can I get a Modelo? Uh, the dime bag is going 162 and 0 this season. Oh, yeah. No. No. <laughs> no. Let him have it for the day. You just have fun with it today. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hope's still springing internal into day two. Just roll with it. Yeah. Fighting Wampa says, wait, they're still playing 162 games in Major League Baseball this year? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they figured it out. Yeah. How many double headers are they going to be for that? Uh, there'll be some, uh, but the the fun thing is the double headers will be nine innings each. So that's good. Well, the Diamondbacks play tonight at uh, is it six forty or five forty? I think it's six forty. Okay, six forty. Uh, good catch says Seth Beer needs to be careful. He keeps hitting like this. The crappy front office is going to trade him. <laughs> I know that's the thing. Yeah. I, I thought the same thing. Good cat. I'm like. Oh, he's going to screw around and get himself on a new team. Yeah, that's uh, if you're any good, you get traded. Uh, Billy Ray from Avondale says, all the Diamondback fans should take a screenshot of the standings today because it's going to be a long time before they're leading the division again. We know that, mm -hmm. Billy Ray. Let's, mm -hmm. Let us have the moment. Uh, Boomer Sooner says, good day, Daily Blender. Good day, gentlemen in the studio. Uh, really, could you uh, get a... Uh, ice cold beer, please, Randy. 95 degrees out here by the pool in it North is. Country. Yeah, it is. It is uh, quite warm out there, but uh, cooler temperatures are on the way. And I Hooray. understand, uh, according to all of my research and all the, uh, you know, the highly sensitive equipment here at the uh, Harman Solar 1580, the Fanatic Weather Center. And I am a chief meteorologist. Uh, and I've been watching this equipment and all the, uh, the changes and all that, the radar maps. We might get some rain next week. Shh. Oh, your phone says, huh? Uh, Randy's chuckle says the yo brought up a bunch of AHL mine. Oh, yokes uh, brought up a bunch of AHL minor league players to get some experience. And that's why he's upbeat. Uh, evil is Darth Keon's forte. Yankees commandos, etc. I'm sorry. What evil is your forte because you're a Yankees fan, a commandos fan, that sort of thing. So, okay. He came up, you came to us all nice and smiling and hey, mm -hmm. good, good, easy mm -hmm. going. Now we know. Now I mean, we know. Uh, you can yep. you can call me whatever fan you want, but that's so not I'm not rooting for the Yankees. Mm -hmm. I haven't rooted for the Yankees in a decade and a half. So I don't have to tell you. Sure. Uh, the Jet says, just like in college, me and the boys will be at the bar. And of course, uh, we'd uh, meet girls uh, and there'd always, uh, well, there'd always be a fat one and we'd yell, not it. <laughs> That's horrible. Uh, yeah, you don't. Have, hopefully, you just say not it, but nothing else. You do. Don't don't be cruel. Uh, Straight striper says Keon way to channel the spirit of Iverson with the not it game. Uh, not it. But what are we talking about? We're talking about practice, Keon. We're talking about practice. We, we, are, we are talking about practice. Not it. Not See, not you, not the game. Not the game. We're talking about practice. Not it. Not it. See, again, you're just I'm not, not, even, not, I'm not doing it. If, if there's a you not, it always going to lose now. If there's a not it for an not actual it, thing, it. I will do it. But I'm not I'm not just going to do it just to do it. Then you're going to lose. This righteous in oh, indignation okay. means we're going to have a lot of really bad traffic reports. <laughs> I, well, we're not going to have any more traffic reports. I'm retiring as a traffic reporter. Oh, <laughs> big baby. I'm not it. Not it. I'm not a big baby. I was never a traffic reporter in the first place. And I was like, oh, I'll be nice and play no, along. You won't be with that spirit. <laughs> I, I never wanted to be. I'm okay without that job. <laughs> Mr. Wilbur says, 
Uh, does the dot thing do what they used to do on the TV show Batman Crash Boom Bam? What the hell is he talking about? It's a Friday show. Let me just form a drink. Just Good. Moving along. Thank you, Randy. Just move along. Good Cat <laughs> says the Karai Baby is scheduled to announce the World Series this year. It's the, it's the only championship he's going to see. Vernon Helllagers. Oh, Brandy, did you get my email? Yes, I did. Uh, Fish Tank, uh, up to the challenge, as always, yesterday heard our cries for more than a uh, like a three-second blip of Vernon Hell Lakers. Yeah. He went in the studio, and now we have this. Vernon Hell Lakers! Vernon Hell Lakers! Something knocks you out again. Won't be in the postseason, but something knocks you out again. Something knocks you out, so burn it out. There you go. The Suns they knocked you out again. You won't be in the postseason. Burn in hell. That Matt was uh, nicely done. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So good. It, it's a punk song, so I, I, I felt like I needed to translate for some of you older people. <laughs> <laughs> Lost Toby says... Zero babies have been named Melvin in 2022. Boy, Lost Toby went uh, deep on the research on this one. There's a graph, uh, percentage named Melvin, and uh, overall ranking, zero. From uh, 1880 to 2022, Melvin was actually a pretty popular uh, name turn of the century, uh, you know, uh, 1900s, but it has decreased down to nada in 2022. Well, uh, but, it, but the coach for the Padres, his first name is is Bob, not Melvin. Oh, I know. His we're last just, name yeah, is Melvin. We were just yeah. talking about how Melvin yeah. is no longer a first name. Yeah. So I could make it like Melvin could be the standard punchline for me. I have a pretty damn good chance of offending nobody. So mm -hmm. that's a good thing to know. Thank you for the research, Lost Toby. And right now, before uh, everybody named Melvin becomes the butt of a joke, I need to know. Anybody listening, is your first name Melvin? Mm. Don't lie to me, because I'll know if you're lying. Mm -hmm. But if your name's Melvin, well, then I'll figure something out. But I, I'm just curious, because according to the graph, actually, Melvin uh, wasn't even popular 100 years ago. It came popular uh, in the, like, around 1915, 1920. It was at its peak in 1932. Kind of hung around a little bit through World War uh, I and II. And uh, then started to dive in the 60s and then uh, sudden just sort of faded all the way down to nobody named Melvin in 2022. So that's too bad because one of the greatest voice actors of all time, mm -hmm. Melvin Blanc. Well, his name was Mel Blanc. So it, it wasn't Melvin. Exactly. Mel. Oh, that's Melvin. a good question, Toby. Yeah. Find out if anybody just skipped the VIN and named their kid Mel. See, that could be how uh, people are getting around this. So they can still name a kid Mel, just let's leave off the VIN. So that mm -hmm. more research needs to be done. Uh, Yankees Evil Empire says, my dad's name is Melvin. And yes, he does listen. All right. So in honor of your dad, Yankees Evil Empire, I will not make uh, needless jokes about, uh, you know, Melvin's. <laughs> And I just <clears> noticed <throat> Yankees Eagle Empire's dog because uh, he had sent me a picture of his dog, uh -huh. uh, a couple of his dogs, uh, March 23rd. That's a good dog. Oh, I love dog play pictures. Mm. Uh, by the way, my dog is uh, doing much better now. He's uh, finally eating solid food again, and he's uh, a pain in the ass. That's how I know he's doing better. And uh, full recovery. The only thing is they don't tell you about this parvo is that that parvo virus can be in the rocks and can be in your house and can be on every like for two years mm. the virus just hangs around for like ever so soon as he's not contagious we're gonna have to spray the entire basically just uh, i'm gonna get a helicopter i'm gonna fill the bucket with bleach and uh -huh. <laughs> just drop it on the house it's the only just everything I can't, can't think of what else to do man yeah uh, yeah, that's going to be a, a lot of deep cleaning because we were hoping to bring in another puppy, but I don't want to bring in a, another puppy if they're going to get parvo. That was horrible. That was a hor and expensive, horrible and expensive thing to have to go through. And, uh, yeah, so, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll get an older dog, you know, like a like three or four year old dog to be his buddy. But, um, yeah, that was, uh, that was something the jet says, sounds like Keon got promoted to the traffic reporter. 
he doesn't know that yet, and he might try to refuse the job. But since we know he doesn't want the job, I think now we're going to have to say he officially has the job. I mean, you can give it yeah. to me. I, I, I am not doing that not job. It. I uh, did the job. Not at the, we were not not itting for it. You were so, literally telling me that I was doing it. Well, now I'm telling you it's your job. <laughs> it's, it's not my job. I'm not <laughs> Hello. doing it. Yes, who am I? Your boss. You are my who boss. Are you, the employee. You, I'm saying it's your job. I assume, Look, I, I, one of the reasons why I wanted to work here is when I started talking to you guys, you're very uh-huh. reasonable people. Uh-huh. At the time, well, if you made a horrible uh, error in judgment, uh, uh, apparently, uh-huh. not putting me in a position to fail is something uh-huh. I assumed was not going uh-huh. to be happening. Maybe uh-huh. this is a position for you to challenge yourself and rise above it. Well, if you and if, someday you know what? if you somebody look back on this moment <laughs> and say they pushed but me, teach they me. prodded me, and now <laughs> I am the finest traffic reporter in the entire land. I have created an empire. On the fact that Randy and Jeffrey not edited me into doing traffic. Not it. Not it. And now I'm a I, star. I am Keon Rose. I am a traffic god. And I will reign <laughs> supreme above all wow. other traffic reporters for a time. I, I, you know, bow to me, traffic reporters. If I, I have it. the information that you have, but you a lot quicker. If I have, if I become the greatest traffic reporter of all time, something has gone uh, horribly sideways. Uh, you can be more than I just one thing. Look at Randy. He's yeah. a, a meteorologist. Are you trying to yeah. no, poo on chief, the fact he's a chief meteorologist? I just seem to also yeah. notice that Randy enjoys doing the weather. Do, do you not, Randy? Mm-hmm. Uh, not really. Your enjoyment yeah. is irrelevant to us. I yeah. just want you to know that up front. <laughs> yeah, it has nothing to do with my enjoyment. I was well, saying, I, I got 50 cents more an hour. Am I getting anything more an hour? No, doing? You're oh, doing we have to go to break. Now. Okay, uh-huh. uh, mm. not it, mm. not it. Oh, I, I, right. I have to do it anyway. I mean, <laughs> you, you can't do it. I, I have to push the button. It's going to get worse for you, Ken. I can just tell you right now, it's going to get worse. <laughs> it's a daily blender here on 1580, the fanatic. If you're an IT professional looking for an opportunity with great benefits and the freedom to creatively solve problems in a career with great growth potential and a team environment, look no further than Affinity Technology. Serving the Valley since 1992, Affinity Technology is looking for a level one tech to develop and deliver excellent solutions and outstanding customer service. Visit ATECHAZ.com forward slash jobs and get started with your future today. That's ATECHAZ.com forward slash jobs. AZ Preps 365 is your headquarters for all things high school sports in Arizona. Brett Quintine, James Mello, and Jose Garcia keep you up to speed with all the action, highlights, interviews, and insider information for the prep sports scene. You need to tune in to AZ Preps 365 every Saturday morning from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. on your new home for sports, 1580 and 99.3. The Fanatic. And always on at 1580thefanatic.com. Are you a planner? Do you like to plan ahead? Then, of course, you already have a plan to call Harmon Solar, right? Bruce Jacobs here. It should be at the top of your list to get solar now and enjoy huge savings next summer. Up to 85% on your monthly bill with zero down and no payments for 12 months. Then you can plan what to do with all that extra money. Harmon Solar is a family-owned, women-owned, local company that uses top-of-the-line equipment. Call Harmon Solar, 800-281-3189, or go to HarmonSolar.com. To celebrate State Farm's surprisingly great rates, we gave this song surprisingly great lyrics. Hey neighbors, when your plans get hard to file, State Farm's got a switch it up style. Great rates save you cash, so if you come join us, you'll get your coins up. Oh, now you know you can save that dough. And you're covered on your ride and your home. For great service on the low, then call up State Farm. It's time to switch it up. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. We're on a mission to connect every Arizona service member, veteran, and their families to the support and resources they deserve. If you or someone you know needs assistance with benefits, health care and wellness, employment, or housing, visit connectveterans.org or call 866-4-AZ-VETS right now to learn more. This message is brought to you by the Arizona Coalition for Military Families, the Arizona Department of Veteran Services, and Arizona's Be Connected Partners. I'm here to tell you about a technological shocker. Believe it or not, you can listen to us on your smart speaker. That's shocking. Wow. What a world we live in. All you have to do is say listen to 1580 The Fanatic.
Uh, baseball is underway here in the United States, and you can turn K's into cash, big hits into big wins. With the uh, you guessed it, FanDuel Sportsbook, Sportsbook right now, new customers. You step up to the plate, dig into that batter's box with a risk-free first bet up to a thousand bucks. Just sign up, place your bet. first bet. FanDuel will refund you up to a thousand dollars back in site credit if you don't win. Now, listen, this is my favorite uh, sports book, not only because I like it, because they let me talk about it, but it, because they got great promotions every day. They've got super ways for you uh, to make, uh, you know, big paybacks, big, uh, big wins on uh, just a little output. Safe and secure app. You're not going to get hacked, not going to have the dark web with all your information. Uh, you're safe. And when you win, you get paid really fast. So uh, see for yourself why FanDuel is America's number one sports book. Just download the app and uh, sign up using promo code Randy1580 to start getting your risk-free first bet up to $1,000. That's promo code Randy1580. Got to be 21 or older. Presence in Arizona. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as a non-withdrawable site credit that expires 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. If you have a gambling problem, please call 1-800-NEXT-STEP. Or text next step to five three three four two. So here's an update: Tiger Woods has gone ahead and uh, got himself par on fifteen, sixteen, and seventeen, and so now go. we're watching and seeing what he's doing on eighteen. Uh, I don't have uh, an update on where he is with that, but man, just survived this hole, and you have made the cut uh, by quite a bit, actually. Um, uh, so far, uh, we have, I've only lost two guys to the cut uh, in my wagers. How about you, Randy? Uh, Keon, you still have guys in the mix, or are you out of the action? Well, I, I've, uh, I lost Brooks Kepka, but I, I still have uh, 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 the leader, uh, 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 Scheffler. Scheffler. Yeah. So what happened to Kepka? What happened to K.O. Pekti? Boy, I don't know. He just had a bad couple of days. Uh, it started out yesterday. He, he got himself in a hole. I think he was he was uh, three over at the end of the play yesterday. Today didn't go any better. Uh, you know, I, I, I really thought Brooks Kepka was primed uh, to make a run at it this year, but a bad, uh, but a loss. Uh, it didn't happen. You, you weren't alone on that, Randy. A lot of people thought that he had a chance to, to make a run at it uh, this year, but I, I think that Augusta uh, and the Masters tournament specifically just tests your short game, and that's not his his strength. It's the fact he can drive the ball forever and miles and miles and miles, and he puts himself in such good situations that you know when, you know once he's out there on the green, he can he can make things happen. But if that if that long game for him is not working, then the short game becomes much more difficult for him. And I've seen him struggle when he uh, kind of gets in his own head about that stuff. Well, I'm looking at Tiger Woods, and it, it, here's an interesting thing. There's only uh, a couple of times that he has been under par for the entire, uh, you know, match. He's did they call it a match? No tournament. No. no, this this round for the entire round. round. It's yeah. a round. Uh, you know, he's like he had four bogeys in a row, and uh, he's he, you know he's been just hanging in there basically. So what is going on with him? Is it going to be fatigue? Is it going to be just one of them days? I mean, I, I, when I was watching, wind did not uh, seem to be that much of a factor, at least not here in the last couple of hours. And uh, I, I didn't hear the the announcers talking too much about the wind uh, or breezes or anything like that. So. I, what do you think is going on with Tiger Woods right now as he's just hanging in there? Well, in my humble opinion, the guy hasn't played competitive golf in 508 days. So that's number one. Number two, the Masters golf course is not like any other course on the face of the planet. It's very undulated. You're walking uphill, downhill, uh, sideways, side of the mountain, uh, around the mountain. You've got to go in all these different configurations. It's a very challenging course because – Sometimes the tee box is elevated over the green you're hitting to. Sometimes it's the opposite way around where you're hitting up to a, an elevated green. And then the green complexes themselves, some of them are very small, and they're right next to water or bunkers. So if you get into trouble, you, you've got to be precise, and you've got to hit your spots. And, uh, and quite honestly, it is one of the most difficult uh, courses to maneuver. So that's why this is a prestigious event. And, and uh, while we talk about uh, the leg that Tiger almost had amputated, both of his legs were seriously hurt. So uh, the fact that he's walking around out there, 
the the fatigue is definitely going to play a factor in this. And of course, when he swings, you know, the leg that you're pushing off of to rotate your body, I to do that at the highest level, to be able to drive the the ball, you know, however many miles per hour it, it goes when these guys hit it. 178. Yeah, I mean, it's 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 unbelievable, but it's an, an amount of torque that coming off of that particular injury can't feel good. Can I say this, though, compared to other sports, if you can do a sport in business casual, how hard <laughs> is it really? <laughs> Just saying. 888-368-1580. So uh, earlier, Shooter McGavin was giving me a hard time because he thought I didn't know who Bob Melvin was. Of course I knew who Bob Melvin is, but I didn't feel like saying the manager of the Padres' name when mm-hmm. I was talking about it. Mm-hmm. But I did mention that You don't really hear anybody named Melvin anymore. And Lost Toby shows that uh, Melvin is is not a name that has been given to any babies in 2022. It's not very uh, very popular no more. Uh, So now more Melvins are starting to pop up. And uh, uh, Blissful Hayes says Devin Booker's dad's named Melvin. Oh, <laughs> well, that makes sense, though. He would have been born not know that. in, in uh, the window when that name actually was popular. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lost Toby, uh, he did the research. He says, also, Mel. Nobody named anybody just Mel in 2022. Wow. Then I remembered. I remember a Mel. He was a pastor of a church that I went to back in. Uh, what year was that? What, 1991, who uh, slept with the uh, secretary, left his wife, and then tried to keep being the pastor of the church. So everybody's like. No, you got to go now. Uh, so there's another mail for you. Killer Rabbit says, uh, hey, Randy, what's that gambling uh, problem number again? Uh-oh. 1-800-NEXT-STEP. Says, my problem isn't uh, I'm losing my car in my house. My problem is I suck about $5 at a time. Uh, please pour me a Coors Original and go Matsuyama. Kiss the Cook says, what about the greatest comedy mind? Mel Brooks. He's a yeah. great comedy mind. I don't know yeah. if I'd give him the title greatest comedy mind, period. But no, he is one of the great ones. And then he goes, Jeffrey, you gave your dog Parvo? Yes, I gave my dog Parvo. I, <laughs> I messed around. I was hanging out with some other dogs. And, you know. uh, Mars Bars 805 says, happy faded Friday, guys. And what a game last night. I know I'm late to the show, but my wife and I had a blast. It's a great start. And let's keep it up. I'll take an 805, please, Randy. And go Diamondbacks. For some right, reason, he tags in a go A's too. Oh, wait, wait, buddy, you gotta sully it with that. Just go Diamondbacks. You had it right the first time. Shooter McGavin says Melvin Gordon isn't that old. Well, he was born in 1961, and that was about the time that the uh, Melvin uh, popularity was really starting to dip. That's uh, so. Yeah, he's he. Yeah, I listen. There's a point where it changes, people. That's what I'm saying. And right now, zero percent of people are named Melvin. That's all I'm saying. Good cat says, I suddenly feel really bad for Keon. I'll do the track reporting, he says. I <laughs> like that, Keon. You've been assigned a task now. People uh, are so sad to hear you uh, do it that they want to volunteer for you. Okay. You should be ashamed of yourself. I'm not. You should be ashamed of yourself. I, I don't enjoy doing it. I don't want to. I would Shame. like I would like to talk about sports, like what I thought Shame. I was hired to do. Not, not it. Ah, uh, see, you're too slow. Sorry. Uh, we we quite frankly tied on that one. So I don't no. know what you're talking about. Not it. Not it. Not it. Uh, no, right. you were last. No, Jeffrey, right you were last. You were last. <laughs> don't know you were last on that last you one. Heard, you've got a delay between Randy and I. We hear <laughs> well, no, okay, perfectly. if I have a delay, then it doesn't so matter right. what I do. Yeah, you'll never win. <laughs> Thank you for telling me the game is rigged. I mean, it's just <laughs> I don't know. It might be different when we're in studio. Not it. Not it. Not no, it. Randy. You got you. I, there's a delay. I was second. Oh, that's right. Okay. Like, I think See, right. There you go. There you go. Doesn't matter what I do. It's a real shame to be Yuki on sometimes. <laughs> I noticed. Trust Shooter me. McGavin says, what about that running back from the Broncos, Jeffrey? Uh, oh, Melvin Gordon. Uh, what, I don't know. What year is he born? Got to be. Well, he's a, an outlier in the 80s then, right? Uh, Rex Terra says, well, I, what I think it is, it's the Greens. I once saw Ernie Ells miss a, a re, uh, misread a putt by 20 feet. Oh, yeah. yeah. The greens are fast. That is a fact. I saw some people having some troubles with that on. Uh, I don't remember what hole it was. Uh, oh, that's right. Killer rabbit. Mel's diner. Remember that? Grits. Mm, kiss yeah. my grits. Yeah. So uh, Melvin Gordon, uh, 28 years old, born in 93. Wow. That, uh, that, that's unique. And then uh, Melvin Ingram, 
Linebacker, mm-hmm. Chiefs. Uh, he's 32, born in 89. There you go. Well, at least I was kind of right with that one. Big George says, to be fair. To be fair. To be fair. To be fair. Keon still did a better job reporting the traffic than the... Or the oh, you missed this. Do you still have that uh, that sound clip of that traffic guy? <laughs> oh, I, 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 I'll, I'll look for it. I, I don't know oh, if I Oh, my have God. It. He was so that bad. Was, He's a, this yeah. guy was whispering the traffic while his voice was crackling in fear. And, uh, <laughs> what? I don't know. I think that guy is probably working for K-Jazz now. Yeah. Uh, Worst traffic well, there's, no, there's no reason to be afraid of the traffic. If you screw up, you screw up. But that was about the time we decided, eh, we don't need traffic. <laughs> <laughs> We're good. <laughs> Bless A yeah. says, remember the show, Mel's Diner? That was supposed to be here in Phoenix. It was in the yeah. early 80s. Yeah, yeah, and remember how they made Phoenix just a big dust bowl in this one diner in the middle. That was it. Phoenix right. was just one diner. I hate how uh, the rest of the country portrays Phoenix sometimes. Uh, Hamilton Porter says BJ Upton, his real first name is Melvin. Hmm. Okay, listen, hmm. I'm not saying it's a perfect science, and I'm not saying nobody has ever been named Melvin, but in 2022, nobody has been named Melvin. The popularity has now dwindled down to zero. I can't tell you what happened 30 or 40 years ago. I don't think you guys are understanding what I'm saying here. Yes. Fighting Wampa says, Jeffrey, sounds like your backyard needs a booster shot. Um, are you talking about because you can can you guys hear the yard, yard guys out there well is he's talking about the uh, parvo outbreak you currently oh. have uh yeah as i can hear the yard guys and it's very distracting but you, i hopefully you guys can hear it but yes i'm just gonna pour bleach all over the rocks i'm not even kidding mm. i'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, deluded i'm not like a monster but i'm gonna pour uh, a bunch of bleach over those rocks i i don't want any dog to have to go through what that dog just went through uh let's see uh good cat says what about mel ott <sighs> guys just understand this year nobody was named mel <laughs> and mel ott was born in 1909 yeah <laughs> kind of makes the point it's exactly when that name would have been popular <laughs> mr wilbur says not it not it not it not it oh burn burned it again keon burned again. i was in the bit in the middle of laughing but it doesn't matter anyway so you know <laughs> I don't know why Randy's chuckle just says this out of nowhere. He says, they tased me. <laughs> just <laughs> sorry. Boomer Sooner says, hey, wait a minute. Uh, shouldn't be uh, Keon's job. I started that traffic report yesterday. What are you talking about? This, this... Oh, yeah, you did. But why? It's just the same traffic report every day then. Traffic sucks. What do you need to know? That's another thing. We figure it's going to suck no matter what. Find out for yourself. You know, we you, know, you don't need us to tell you the traffic. The jet says, Keon, you could be the Ron Burgundy of 1580. Yeah, it's kind of me right now, though, the way I read text. <laughs> Yankees Evil Empire says, good God, once a Yankees fan, always a Yankees fan. Welcome, Darth Yankee on. Wow. Darth Yankee on. You keep my name off of that team's name. You keep my name off of that team's name. He's about to go Will Smith on you, Yankees <laughs> Evil Empire. No. Mm-mm. Straight Striper says, when Keon anonymously complains to HR about being forced to do unwanted job duties, a.k.a. traffic reports, I guarantee he'll be the first to say, not it, when Jeffrey not questions it. everybody about it. I mean, yeah. my, my, pro- my problem with complaining to HR is that there's like 10 of us that work here. It's going to be obvious who's complaining about what. It's just, I'm letting, I'm letting it go. I forgot to tell you, I, I'm also HR. <laughs> ah, <So>. well. <laughs> Go ahead. Put your anonymous tip in the box. (laughs) Killer Rabbit says, I'm going to reverse my mastectomy, and by God, I'm going to have a boy or a girl named Melvin. You go, Killer Rabbit. You get that done. Uh, Good Cat says, word of advice, if you're being chased by a pack of taxidermists, don't play dead. That was just Mm -hmm. like the worst. That's the worst Mm -hmm. joke. That's Mm -hmm. horrible. Wiggy My Piggy says, Jeffrey, how about Melva Pella? Melapella, but it's not even Mel, Melvin, Melapella. Mm. Who the hell's Melapella? Melapella. Did you just make me say something filthy in Spanish? Mm. <sighs> yeah, I'll mm. go dead silent, Keon. I don't even care. I'm waiting for you to Google something. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I haven't gotten anything. Uh, the translator's not giving me anything that's. You actually did, but why don't you just Google Melapella? Urban Dictionary, Mexican lingo to express superiority on someone else's face. 
especially after said person announces an achievement. We got to work on your Google game, kid. Yeah, no, it's uh, I don't give a bleep, basically. I don't give a bleep. Is that what Melapella means? Or you just that, said that's, you what, that's what the Google's telling me. I well, don't. My, give my a Google bleep. game is is fine when I have to Google <laughs> sports. I like I. I'm you should really to... anytime they give you that word <laughs> first, just do the first thing and then do the translation. I'm just yeah, assuming it, it, it was offered dirty. the translation. I clicked on it, but I was right though. It was Spanish, so mm-hmm. yay me. Uh, not it. Not, not it. it. Oh no, Brandy Beach. It's a Daily Blender here on 1580 <laughs> The Fanatic. From the Augusta National Golf Club, Westwood One Sports presents this special report on the Masters. I'm Ted Emmerich. After a 4-over-76 on Thursday, Justin Thomas looked headed towards slamming his trunk and heading home this evening. But Thomas won't just play the weekend here. He might be a factor. Nine iron for Justin Thomas. and He's got to stand on this. Starts it out to the right. Flag is on the left. Takes a big hop to the left from 166. Here, this one comes down the hill. Hang on a second. Justin Thomas has hit it to a couple of inches. Whoa! Stuart Sink made a hole in one about an hour ago, and JT just about put it in on top of him. What a shot. Brian Kittrick, the call on at 16 there on Sirius XM. Thomas with the kick in birdie. He's five under for the round. Best score of the day. JT is six off the lead. Scotty Scheffler, seven under par. And he's got three feet for birdie coming up at 16. You're listening to coverage of the 2022 Masters on Westwood One. My name is Douglas. I'm 79 and I live in Chicago. I'm a writer, director. I used to be a marathon runner. Now I'm a walker. And the kind of work that I do, you are surrounded by people who are all younger than you. Memory became a factor. As everyone gets older, where did I put my keys? But I had to get help somewhere along the line to stay competitive. I happened to cross Prevagen, and I started taking it. I saw myself having an improved memory, which at the same time, I felt better about myself. I could not be doing what I'm doing today had it not been for Prevagen. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. Douglas is a paid testimonialist and real Prevagen user. Based on a clinical study of subgroups of individuals who are cognitively normal or mildly impaired, this product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Tiger Woods is going to make the cut in his first tournament since the car crash last year, sporting a turquoise golf shirt and navy pants. Woods on the green at 18, two over for his round, and one over for the tournament. He's eight off the lead. Let's check the leaderboard. Sponsored by Prevagen. Prevagen is the most recommended memory support brand by pharmacists. Woods doffing his cap after making his par putt at 18, acknowledging the patrons. Woods at one over Heading into the weekend, the leader is Scotty Scheffler at seven under par. Scheffler with three holes to go, four under today. Charles Schwartzel, Sung J.M., Shane Lowry, Hideki Matsuyama, all at three under, four shots back of the number one player in the world. From Augusta, I'm Ted Emmerich, Westwood One Sports. KQFN Tempe, also transmitting on K25CD Phoenix at 99.3 FM. And K24 Charles Hills at 95.9 FM. All right, people, settle down. Because it's time. Time for what? Showtime. When does it start? Right now. Three, two, one. Let's get on with the show. Let's do it. All right, buddy. It's 4 o'clock here on the Daily Blender. We've got Randy Ringo Pound, Jeffrey O'Brien, alongside Randy White. we got Keon Rose in the control room, and you guys are in the Fanatic text line, 888-368-1580, as we broadcast live in the Harmon Solar Studio in Scottsdale. And, uh, you know, uh, opening day for the Dimebacks, that, that was good. That was memorable. That was nice. It was fun. I don't know what happens next. I don't care what happens next. But, uh, boy, if you were at that game, you, you, got to, you got your money's worth there at the end. You are sitting there. If you were even still there, you were sitting there and kind of like, well, I guess this is the way it's going to go for us this year. And then all of a sudden, what the just happened? Wow. Uh, So I don't know if anybody got a chance to try any of the new foods at the uh, ballpark there, but uh, there are some other foods that uh, came up at other ballparks, Randy. 
that I think you might like more than a hundred and fifty one dollar hamburger from the okay. Braves. All right, all right, the, let's go. The <laughs> Orioles have crab cake egg rolls. That's <clears throat> that's not bad. That's, it doesn't sound bad. I'm not a big crab guy, but go ahead. How about the Rangers of Texas have an alligator corn dog? Hmm. Maybe. Maybe I could see that. That might be worth trying there. I just saw those yeah. and I thought, yeah. hmm, I, 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 I like corn dogs. You know, and I eat corn dogs uh, for lunch sometimes. It's just a matter of I'm busy. I don't have time to sit there and make a full on sandwich. You throw a couple of corn dogs in the, uh, yeah. in the microwave and boom, there you go. You're done. Yeah. And you eat them yeah. and you go on with your life. So, uh, but uh, alligator though, have you had alligator? Cause it, to me, it tastes like snake, which tastes like what you think snake tastes like, you know, mm. you ever smell uh, a snake. I, That's what yeah, it tastes I have, like. I have not, I have not uh, tasted alligator. No, I've had uh, friends that, uh, that have done that. And, uh, I, I I would be interested. Keon, have you had uh, alligator or snake? I have not. No. Have you smelled a snake? Have you ever like held a snake or seen a snake or been close to a snake? Uh. I Do you mean, know what a reptile smells like? I don't know what a reptile <laughs> smells like. And the last uh, snake I saw was um, my my neighbor was killing a rattlesnake in his yard when I was in Texas. So, uh, yeah, that's the right move, if you ask me. But, uh, well, yeah, if you if you ever get a whiff of one, that's what they taste like. They okay. taste like what they smell. An alligator, <laughs> it tastes like that. Uh, you're not missing much if you don't eat alligators, what I'm trying to tell you. So, anyways, I don't know how we got on that, but uh, okay. So the Phoenix Suns, uh, they they're playing tonight, right? They're playing the Mormons. They are. And mm-hmm. uh, is that in Mormontown or is that here in Phoenix? That is in Mormontown. All right. So uh, I don't know if they're going to get another win this season. I don't know um, if they play with just the bench. Keon, can they get another win this season? They can because it's it's a really deep bench, but. Uh, you're going to have to play another team that's pretty unmotivated to uh, start all of their players for over maybe 30 minutes in a game. Uh, that, uh, that's what it's going to take to get another win. And, and I think the Suns have pretty obviously put, taken their foot off of the gas pedal and they're just trying to get into uh, the postseason healthy. Uh, Utah might not be that motivated because I, I don't think that anybody can catch them that's in the play-in game, that's trying to get out of the play-in game. So it could be bench versus bench. So it could be bench versus bench, yeah. and then Phoenix could win that. Okay. Because uh, it would be cool to see 64 wins, but I went back and I saw some stuff about how uh, you know teams have fared uh, over the years uh, if they have uh, 63, 64, 65 wins. And a lot of these saber metric type people, a lot of the uh, uh, statistics uh, guys, a lot of the guys who are, uh, you know, the crunching numbers, you know, and they, they, they've uh, worked out the percentage. I don't think it applies to this because there are teams that have won 70 games and then still won the championship. And then there's a team that won a 70 games and, and then lost. So, but the thing that everybody's like uh, floating out there is uh, so far, eight teams have had 63 wins at the end of a season, only 12 and a half percent have won the championship afterwards. Mm. And that was the Boston Celtics back in 1985. So you know, go, Oh no. Oh God, this could be bad things for us. I don't think so. I don't think that that stat means anything. Uh, there was another team that had 64 wins. They won nothing. Four teams uh, won nothing after 64 wins, but then 65 wins. Well, four teams uh, got 65 wins and three of them won a title. So it's like, I don't think there's a gauge on that. Uh, you can't go with the, the statistical number of how many wins means, well, you know what happens then a lot of times people will shout those stats out in football or basketball or even baseball and say, well, you know, if, you, if the, the person who does this first and then that, and it, I don't think that applies to this because 65 wins, 75% uh, who have that won a title, same thing for 66. 67 drops to 71 percent 68 50 percent 69 100 percent. i don't can you make any the only thing i've ever made out of a high win total at the end of the season is the fear they might get tired because if they are working so hard at trying to win every game in the regular season and that was the focus and the finish line once you achieve that now you're kind of coming down from that and you're coming down at the wrong time you got to be going up in the playoffs. So I, I don't know if, if you guys can make anything out of this historical data or if, if I, I don't think I'm going to take anything. I'm going to walk away from it and say, doesn't matter. 
Yeah, well, first of all, uh, I was told there'd be no math when I took this job. And so several, se several times uh, there have been examples of mathematics on this show. So I'm starting to speculate uh, that there's a lot of math involved yeah, in this job. basic percentages. Uh, I'm not asking uh, you to calculate nothing. Uh, uh -huh. uh, you're trying to confuse me with all these. Numbers. Second of all, I think this team is young enough. And I think this team has uh, good enough leadership that even if they lose everything from here on out, uh, they've already clinched everything. They're going to go into this thing. Hopefully they're going to feel healthy. Uh, they're going to heal up some of these bumps and bruises they've had throughout the season. And, and, and I think they'll get right back on track. I, I think uh, uh, they are young enough and they're uh, excited enough uh, about where they're at. And I, I don't think this is going to hurt them. Uh, Keon, you might have a differing opinion. No, I, I don't think this is going to hurt them either. I, I agree with you that a, they're young and B, the, the oldest player that I would worry about their health is Chris Paul, and he's coming back from an injury. Yeah. So he's about as, as rested as, as can possibly be expected. But, but I, I also just think uh, I, I, I agree with Jeffrey here. I, I just don't know what I'm supposed to take away from, from all of this. Uh, the, I, I love boxing, and there's, and there's a, you know, a phrase in boxing that styles make fights. I just think the matchups uh, determine right. a lot of that. And also your coach's ability to adjust in a series. There's a reason we call the playoffs in the NBA, the second season. Yeah. It's really not like the regular season in a lot of ways, because you keep seeing the same team again and again and again. Can you make adjustments and change things up to what the other coach is trying to do? Monty Williams is a fantastic coach. And I'm going to use that as my indicator to say, sure. I think the Suns are going to have a really great run in this postseason. Yeah. I'm just looking at the, what we know, what we know mm -hmm. currently and uh, you know, the, the momentum they have coming into this thing and mm -hmm. they they've had momentum all year. So it's kind of tough to quantify that, but uh, the, the momentum they have coming into the playoffs, the quality of the teams that are going to be before them. Uh, and then if they get to the finals, who the hell is it coming out of the East? When I say I'm, I'm not scared, I'm not saying we can't lose games. I'm just saying, boy, just the way with everything has been and uh, how the depth of the team, that's, that is probably the MVP of the Suns. And you've got guys who could be the MVP of the league in the, uh, in the lineup for the Suns. But the bench has got to be the MVP for this team. You know, uh, maybe I'm just overstating it, but it doesn't feel like it. Well, certainly the Suns have been deep all season long. They haven't lost a whole lot when they had to play, you know, bench players mm -hmm. or when they had to bring in uh, guys off the bench. So I think you're right about that, Jeffrey. I, I don't think there's any this like like Keon and, and you and, and I've been saying all season long, this team is amazingly deep and they've done a great job recruiting, getting the right people that can play in a couple of different positions and play it well. So uh, I think I agree with you. I think the Suns are set up for a deep playoff run. Hopefully finals and finally get that uh, trophy to come to Phoenix. 888-368-1580. Uh, I guess the cook says I had Gator while in Nolens. Uh, not thrilled by it. Definitely not on the try again menu. Not but am I right about how it tastes? It tastes like a snake smells. And if you've ever had, had like a garter snake or if you've ever had, uh, you know, sometimes that musky uh, smell, right? That lady would come mm. to the, uh, you know, the third grade and she'd have this Python and everybody go, Ooh, touch it. Go gross. Ooh, it smells funny. That's what it tastes like. Mm -hmm. uh, good cat says Keon was told there'd be no traffic and no math. Mm. Well, he was never told either of those things. Yeah, that's, uh, that's big I was told there'd be no math. Now, hold up. There wouldn't be much math. I mean, you got to count backwards to 60. It's radio. Mm. Okay, fair mm. enough. Big George says I've had alligator. I've had snake and both literally taste like chicken. Well, then you must add like tons and tons of spices on it. Or something because or you eat very bad chicken one of the two right or uh somebody's like yeah you want some of this uh, alligator yeah here we go it tastes like chicken don't it yo uh, this idiot thought it was alligator i fed him chicken <laughs> <laughs> mr Wilber says and the diamondbacks are giving a course light to the first ten thousand fans who are uh, 21 years or older for tonight's game in celebration of last night's game Ten thousand beers that's awesome I mean, especially I that's. To, I need. I need to leave a little early. Twenty-seven dollars a beer. That's. <laughs> I, uh, I'm gonna. I gotta leave a little early. Well, if you stay, I'll give you two beers. Okay. See. <laughs> Math, Keon. Math. <laughs> Bliss Lay says, "Congratulations to Tiger Woods making the cut today." Sounds like Bruce Jacobs lost some money. Did he really bet money <laughs> against <laughs> He's Tiger Woods making the, the cut? cut? Oh, Bruce, you just don't do that. You don't, you may, you can bet against him winning it. 
you can even bet against him not being in the top five, but bet against Tiger not making the cut. When did he make that bet? Was it today or yesterday? Because, wow. Uh, Jag Dog says, Keon, first of all, not it. Not, not it. it. Oh, I can't tell. It was a tie between you and Randy. So, because of the delay, I'm going to give it to Randy. Of course. Uh, he says, you hate my 49ers. You hate my Red Sox, too? I suppose you hate America there, Keon. Puppies and apple pie. For hating the Red Sox? No. And I don't hate your 49ers at all. That, so, that's. I don't know. <laughs> it's I true. I've never heard him I've, say I've he never been a fan 49ers. of I've never been a fan of Jimmy Garoppolo, but I yeah. like your team. I like, you know, Debo. None and, of us hate the 49ers. Fans, however, can be a little obnoxious. Mm-hmm. And I'm being nice when I say a little. 888-368-1580. Fish Tank says, I don't give a bleep is the meanest thing that Keon has ever said on this show. And I was quoting the internet. Still potty mouth uh all right oh by the way uh lebron james has uh come out and said the ankle is too much i can't go on so that will end the season for lebron james who is now short of getting that scoring title that a lot of people had suspected that he was really just sort of working on at the you know didn't care about the lakers anymore and then when people started calling him out about it publicly he's like nope i'm out <laughs> <laughs> well, no, because his assist numbers were still up. I don't think that, that he was just going for the, the scoring title. If he wasn't, it, when he scored 50 points a game, like if you look at his 50-point games this season, they needed all 50 of those points. So I, I don't know that you could necessarily go after him for that. Um, but just let the team say that he's not playing. Why, why does he have to go come well, out the and, GM. and, and, I and, think and, it's only appropriate Keon. announce? Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, that's the whole point of having your puppet GM. Let the puppet GM say it. You don't have to say it. Don't tell LeBron James how to run his team. You know, he's I mean, not telling with, you how to do traffic. With, with all due respect, LeBron. <laughs> <laughs> Scratch me because says, is your puppy the Kyrie Irving of dogs, Jeffrey? Did he refuse mm-hmm. to get the parvo? No, that's the thing. He had three shots. He had three vaccinations and the rescue that we got him from. I, I, I told them about this. They have lodged complaints with the uh, vaccine manufacturer saying, hey, three shots and this dog still ended up with it. I don't think that they're going to pay for my dog's hospital bills, but I was very happy to see the rescue stand up and say something's not right here. So, uh, but yeah, he's fine and we'll do what we're supposed to do. No, he, he has no choice, by the way, scratch me because. Because he's a dog. 888-368-1580. Not reading that. Senior Wake and Bake just found out that, that actually could be bad. Uh, Bliss Lay says the Colts fans are the worst in the NFL. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that is literally not true. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> Have you, uh, you've never heard anybody say that ever, ever. No. Of no. all the fan bases in the league, I've never no. heard that. No. Uh, Indiana has, well, quite a few racists. But you're never going to say Colts fans are the worst fans in the league. That's just ridiculous. Now, considering it is Indiana, a large amount of those are probably racist, too. So I am not one of them. I'm from here. I just happen to be a Colts fan. Uh, I, I, I have no reason to go to Indiana. So uh, don't lump me in with that. But, yeah, I'm pretty sure there's a little. We ever watch a Colts game. I've sat there with my wife and I've been like, there's an awful lot of white people. <laughs> In the stands, I'm like, this is like uncomfortable. <laughs> this not even it doesn't even look like America in those stands. It looks like <laughs> I don't know what this is like. It's weird. So uh, Tiger Paws says uh, Devo Sanders has now scrubbed his Instagram account, Facebook, and all that. A la Kyler Murray. I think you mean Debo Samuel. That I assume that that's what yeah. that means. Yeah. Um, is this just what is it going to happen now? Every time somebody I, 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 wants yes. to get attention, well, not wants to get attention, wants to get paid. I'm telling you, agents literally think that this is a strategy. I, I don't know why it does. It, it worked for exactly two people, LeBron James and Giannis Antetokounmpo. It has worked for zero people who have tried it since, but agents keep using it like it's a tactic. So it's here. It's yeah. here. I, I hate this tactic. Now, I don't know if Debo is doing this because he would like to get paid, and so he's doing it that way, or if he suspects that they're going to trade him because the rumor was that they had him on the trade block. 
So I don't know if he was like, okay, are they going to trade me? Then I'm out. Then I'm taking all this stuff down. Or I would like more money. And this is my tactic. I, I can't tell in this case, but it is a tactic that's here to stay, unfortunately. Yeah. Don't like it. I, I just do not like the tactic. I uh, just, it's childish. And we you end up, uh, I get it. The players are all a bunch of young guys and young guys are going to do what young guys do. That's how they work. That's how they communicate. Uh, it's just, you know, the way things are. All right, fine. I get it. I am not a, a young guy. And neither are though a lot of the fans, a lot of the fans of the NFL and these players aren't going to understand this. And it's going to, put these players in a bad light with the fans. So what the the teams are looking at and what the player is looking at, well, if that happens, oh, that's bad press. That's bad PR for us. Oh, that's a bad look. Oh, that means he's mad. Oh, he wants to quit. Uh, But most of the people who buy the tickets and go to the game are older than this guy. And we think you're being a dumbass. You know, it just, it's a bad look. It's a bad look for the fandom. So Whatever you're trying to achieve with that, uh, well, you know, I guess the teams have to take you seriously, but the rest of us lose respect. So I guess respect doesn't matter, I guess, when you're trying to get paid. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know where I'm going with this. I just feel well, like yeah, I mean, most people hate this. I'm sure most people do hate this, but I think on the other hand, the agent's going to tell the player, hey, look, you do this. You're going to be the bad guy for a few days, but if it works out and we get paid and you come back and produce, it's going to be all water under the bridge. Here's an idea. Produce. He, oh, Debo Samuel has, though. Okay. I mean, you and can't argue that. If He's, they don't give you what you want, there is an end to that contract. And go yeah, on with your life. How about that? He's in the final yeah, year of his but, rookie contract. And, 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 and that's so. the thing. is, it, It's easy to say there's an end to the contract, but when you play a sport like that, where it's like one, one ligament tears, one bone breaks, and you could be finished because Debo's – uh, strength is his athleticism. He's he's one of the top receivers in the league and one of the top rushers in the league as a runner. You know, like if I'm going to be the offense, well, damn it, pay me like I'm the offense. I'm not saying that that's the I'm not saying that's the best tactic to go about getting paid, but I can understand trying to jump the gun on that before some actual injury happens to you and then you can't produce. Watermelon says, seems like a weird tactic. I, I feel like before my annual review, if I went and got rid of all my company stuff, that they're just going to fire me. <laughs> <You know? laughs> Maybe a different situation here, like like Ian was saying. Maybe a little different. A little Navy different. Devil says, superstar wide receivers are drafted every year. And I'm only paying Jerry Rice the money. Wide receivers but are a dime a dozen. Debo Samuel is also one of the top running backs in the league. So again, how many Debos are there? If you think you can replace that dude with just some guy in the draft, and I know that there's a lot of talented people in the draft. Go for it. But I don't think that there's Debo Samuels everywhere. Scratch me because says, hey, where can I drop off some uh, golf clubs for Arizona Sports Angels? Uh, well, we just got a, a set of those the other day. And uh, we were still bringing them in because there's other schools. We were able to completely equip a, a Title I school golf team with golf clubs that exclusively came from members of the fourth dimension. And oh, we could certainly uh, do it again with another school scratch me because so uh, you can drop them off right there at the studios of 1580, the fanatic uh, in Scottsdale. That'd be great. Appreciate that. Uh, all right. We got to take a break. When we come back, it's time for four quarters with Keon Rose. Yeah. He uh, forgot the other day. We're making him do it today. It's a daily blender here on 1580, the fanatic. From the Augusta National Golf Club, Westwood One Sports presents this special report on the Masters. I'm Ted Emmerich. From wondering if he was going to walk again to making the cut at the Masters all in a year's time, Tiger Woods trundles around on his ailing right leg and shoots two over 74 today. He's one over for the tournament and will play the weekend. So, Tiger, how are you feeling? Well, <laughs> I don't feel as good as I'd like to feel, right? Right. Um, but that's okay. You know, you've seen guys do it with, with a chance going to the back nine. If you're within, you know, five or six going to the back nine, anything can happen. And I need to get myself there. That's, that's the key. I need to get myself there. And tomorrow is going to be a big day. It's going to be cool. It's going to be tough. Again, the wind's supposed to blow again and um, tough scoring conditions. I need to go out there and, and handle my business and uh, get into the red. 
and um, give myself a chance going into that back nine on Sunday. Yeah, the temperature might not reach 60 on Saturday. Woods bouncing back from four bogeys in the first five holes to make the cut for the 22nd straight time at the Masters. He's nine off the lead. You're listening to coverage of the 2022 Masters on Westwood One. Where are those receipts? Tax day is nearly here. And Chanel is stressing. Why do I always wait till the last one? Her small business needs a bookkeeper to crunch some big numbers. All these spreadsheets make my head spin. None of this adds up. Indeed can help her hire great people fast. I need Indeed. Indeed you do. Our hiring platform instantly connects you with quality candidates whose resumes on Indeed match your job description. Visit Indeed.com slash credit and get $75 towards your first sponsored job. Terms and conditions apply. At the United States Postal Service, we deliver with advanced technology and equipment so we can reach over 160 million addresses across the country. We're delivering for thinkers, doers, movers, shakers, groundbreakers, future makers, innovators, trailblazers, disruptors, streamers, dreamers. So no matter what business you're in, we'll always be delivering for you. USPS, delivering for America. Learn more at usps.com slash delivering. Dying embers of the second round, let's check the leaderboard. Sponsored by Indeed. Need to hire? You need Indeed.com slash credit. Scotty Scheffler, eight under par in the last group on the course. Had a look for birdie at about 15 feet away, left it just short, tapped in the par. Five under 67 today for Scheffler, the number one player in the world. He is five shots clear of the field. Charles Schwartzel, Sung J.M., Shane Lowry, and Hideki Matsuyama all at three under par. Harold Varner the third, Dustin Johnson, Kevin Na, Cameron Smith at two under six back. Some notables to miss the cut. Jordan Spieth and Brooks Kepka, also Xander Shoffley, Bryson DeChambeau, 12 over. From Augusta, I'm Ted Emmerich, Westwood One Sports. 1580 and 99.3 The Fanatic is your exclusive home for the six-time world champion indoor football league's Arizona Rattlers. Hey, right, listen up. Tune in to The Fanatic for all the fast-paced, hard-hitting action. Listen as the Rattlers work toward the playoffs and their seventh world championship in team history. Let's keep it going. Arizona Rattlers football exclusively on 1580 and 99.3 The Fanatic and at 1580thefanatic.com. David Blender here on 1580, The Fanatic. What's going Mike, on over there? My dog is, uh, he's feeling a lot better. And, well, he, he is aggressively demanding my attention. And uh-huh. what that means for him, he gives me hugs. And for hugs, because uh, he's, he's, he's a little bit bigger than he was when he was a puppy, as you mm-hmm. know. Uh, they grow, and when he's a puppy, people would pick him up and hold him, and he liked that. But when a dog it gets bigger and they know that they're too big to be picked up, they, they go for the next best thing, which is they lean into you. And he's 45 pounds leaning into my <laughs> legs mm-hmm. right underneath the table here. And uh, it, it's adorable, but it's also hard to keep your balance <laughs> when you're trying to be in front of a microphone. So. You're a good boy, buddy. Uh, 888-368-1580. And before we move on to four quarters with Keon Rose, uh, I'm sorry, downs. Which one is it? It's quarters. It's quarters. Right. Four, uh, four quarters now. Yeah. Uh, Lost Toby says, once Carson Wentz gets hurt, the commandos are going to trade for Jimmy G. How mm. would you feel about Jimmy G as your quarterback? Don't Keon? want him. Don't Did want even him. take a moment to no. think about it or? I have thought about it for a while. No, I don't, I don't like, I don't like him as a quarterback. I think he's just very average and he pays he, he's getting paid a lot of money to be very average yeah uh, jimmy glassopolo yeah good very cat sad. wants to know if uh, arizona sports angels would accept curling and highlight equipment <laughs> <laughs> come what, on man what, how what? many title one schools just, do you think are doing either of those just things? just google the high school closest to you and go to their athletics page and see if there is curling mm-hmm. or highlight going on yeah uh no, no is the no, answer probably no thank you i don't mm-hmm. know i mean maybe i'm wrong and watch we'll get a request for it be like <laughs> oh crap uh tiger paws <laughs> says hey how would you like a 150 pound dog leaning in india he shoves mm-hmm. my chair all the way across the room <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> here's number one rattlers fan 
48 21 prediction now you know all right thanks man yeah well they've got a game uh later uh, was it tonight uh i believe it's tonight not on the station because it's not a home game uh but they're playing uh, i think vegas uh the vegas night uh that's right the nighthawks the vegas nighthawks that's what's happening the in, nighthawks yeah in henderson nevada which is not vegas if you ask me it's a suburb i believe of vegas isn't it it's a far 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 is it really oh yeah it's like a dusty it's like apache junction okay there you go 888-368-1580 right now ladies and gentlemen it's time for four quarters with keon rose Thank you, Randy, for the music. Uh, so here it is. Wait, 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 wait. Why are you thanking him for me if you didn't thank me for the introduction? You've never once thanked me for the introduction. Thank you, Jeffrey, for the Not introduction. It. Not, it. Not it. Oh, oh, he's getting better, Randy. Well, I, I can when I want to. Anyway, let's go ahead and get to the four quarters. Quarter number one. Uh, so uh, the the standings are pretty much set at this point. Uh, the The teams are all there. Is there a team that you are most interested in going into this postseason or most interested in watching outside of the Suns? No, oh, you didn't say that when you sent the email. Didn't say outside of the Suns because my first answer was the Suns. Okay. Duh. All right. Well, that's well, fair. I, 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 think. I changed it on the fly on you. That's that's unfair. Uh, just most interested. Well, I, of course, if it's not the Suns, I, I'm really going to be watching what's going on, uh, of course, with last year's champion, uh, Giannis Antetokounmpo and, uh, and his crew. So that uh, that's what I'm looking at. Randy? Uh, the team I'm most interested in in watching uh, outside of the Phoenix Suns, of course, uh, uh, John Moran, that young group that he's playing with, uh, that posse that he's got going, uh, those guys, uh, they don't have any fear. Uh, and they go up, it don't matter who you're playing. They, they can play the... Uh, uh, the reigning champs don't matter. They're going to go out there and play hard and, and play strong. And then you got John Moran in there and his athletic ability. Oh my God. I'll, I'll be watching. Uh, I'll be watching them. Yeah, no, that's a really good team. And I think that uh, we talk about the depth of the Suns all the time. Look out for those Grizzlies, man. They, they, yeah. They're, they're a deep basketball team too. And uh, they are also young. So despite the fact that they've had a good season, I don't think that they're going to be worn down at all. Um, and of course, John Morant is, is a tremendous, tremendous talent, uh, that leads that team, but they've got guys like Jaron Jackson as well, that just, you know, uh, find a way to get things done. So I, I, I think that that's a good pick. I'm going to go with, uh, the Dallas Mavericks. I think that they're a team that's kind of being overlooked, uh, in a lot of ways going into this postseason. uh, at the trade deadline, they made a trade with the wizards. They got back, uh, Spencer Dinwiddie. And uh, Dinwiddie wasn't doing a whole lot in Washington. He's a fantastic fit for the Dallas Mavericks right now. He works really well with Luka Doncic, who's going to be a star in this league for a very, very long time. I'm very interested in watching the Mavericks and what they do, because they might surprise some people. Well, you're incorrect. Both you and Randy are. It should be the Milwaukee Bucks. Of course. Go ahead. Yeah. Sure. Okay. I mean, the Milwaukee Bucks, are they the number one seed in the East? They, 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 they're, they're a really good no. team. I think they're, 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 they, they very well could be the team you face in the finals. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, that there are a handful of teams that could end up coming out of there. So let's move on to the second quarter here because I want to get a little bit not 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 quite yet, but let's let the hot seat is right. coming. This is related to the first question, but I want to get a little bit more specific. What, what player are you most interested in watching going into this postseason, Randy? The player that I am most interested in watching this postseason. I got to be honest with you. Uh, it's got to be. Uh, I want to see how Clay Thompson does with Golden State. I, I think that's a big question mark, and I'm interested to see how he holds up and how he plays. Uh, look, I, I made it clear that I think that this is a, a Golden State is an ambush for the Phoenix Suns, and they better be ready for it. And, and I think that Clay Thompson returning and Draymond Green in there. Uh, I know Steph Curry has not had a MVP like season. But I'm most interested in, in, in watching uh, uh, Clay Thompson and see how he does. Jeffrey? Bismack Biombo. Oh. You just gonna... said that because you like what his name. <laughs> yes. What, what player am I most interested in going into the postseason? Guess who's going into the postseason? Bismack Biombo. Yeah, I'm That's not gonna, my answer. I'm not going to tell you who to pick, but why? Is it just because you like saying his name? or? Yes. Okay. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to lie. Because he may he may play some important minutes. I mean, that you know, too. He, he, you know, you know I, I thought you also had a you, basketball. 
You know who is not going to play in the postseason? LeBron James! (laughs) (laughs) Oh, it never gets old. Oh, Oh, man. Oh, Oh, it's it's so funny. Uh, The player I am most interested in watching going into the postseason is going to be uh, Donovan Mitchell with the the very same Mormons that the uh, Suns are going to be playing tonight. Uh, I think that uh, this matchup that they have going into it, if everything holds... Uh, the five, six matchup with Utah and Denver, they play like every year. It's the most heated basketball rivalry. Nobody talks about because it's Denver and Utah. But when you actually watch the games, these teams do not like each other. They hate each other a lot. And Donovan and Mitchell is just fun to watch in these series because he just elevates his game to just some otherworldly level and they still don't win. I want to see him get over, over that hump. They lost to them again, this regular season, the last time they played and Donovan Mitchell basically told the media, it's the same bleep happening again. I, I can't believe we lost to them again. He's so mad every time they lose to the Nuggets. I'd love to see him slay that dragon and finally get over the top because, man, he is such a talented player and he's so much fun. Uh, and that rivalry is uh, about as fun as it can get for like a non-marquee basketball rivalry. All right. Let's go ahead and get to third quarter here. Bismack Biombo. <laughs> I mean, look, I'm not going to stop you from saying the name. That's that's an all name team caliber name right there. So we've got the uh, the the teams that that Akeel are all set. Akil Badu, Wait, but, that's a baseball player. Never mind. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, come on, man. That's that's still an all name team worthy <laughs> name though. So <laughs> let let's let's just get to it. The biggest surprise of the oh, regular. But well, not oh, no, not yet. Seat. We are not oh. on the hot seat yet, all there, right. fellas. But hang on. Right. What Staying was the, the, I know, I mean, you're, you guys are impatient though. What is the biggest surprise of the regular season? Uh, now that everything is coming to a close and is more or less in the books, what is the biggest surprise to you from this NBA season, Jeffrey? For as nice as it's been, for as sweet as it smells, for as wonderful as it tastes, for as beautiful as it has looked, the Lakers utter destruction has got to be one of the bigger surprises Mm -hmm. now you 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 don't have to say well that's a title team but this level of craptasticness that came from the lakers probably uh one of the biggest disappointments uh the lakers have ever seen in the entire uh, probably history of the lakers uh and then with this much money and this much talent and pedigree the Lakers' utter destruction was, uh, it was a big surprise. It was welcome. It was enjoyed. Uh, it warmed my heart. But that was a huge surprise for me. Randy? I'm going to go out on a limb and say the Boston Celtics. And here's, here's my reasoning one. Uh, we know that uh, uh, Danny Ainge, uh, he stepped down of, uh, as president of basketball uh, uh, for the Celtics. Uh, that head coach that they had in there, that uh, Brad, you know, Stevens. Young, Brad Stevens, looks 12. He, he became the new president of uh, basketball operations. And then they brought in a new head coach, Ime and, Udoka. And they, uh, Ime Udoka. That's another name. Ah. Mac Biombo. Ah, there we go. <laughs> we, and they brought him in and they also made some moves, uh, personnel moves uh, that have uh, worked out quite well. And the damn Celtics are right there. So I, I have to say the biggest surprise for me with all of those moving pieces happening uh, that the Celtics are doing what they're doing this late in the season. So give me the Boston Celtics for the win. Hmm. Now that's a really good answer, Randy. I, I, I went with uh, another team in the Eastern conference. I went uh, Chicago bulls because at the beginning of this season, they made a gigantic push to try and get DeMar DeRozan. And I looked at that roster on paper with Zach Levine and DeMar DeRozan and Nikola Vucevic and Alex Caruso. And I was, I, I thought that was a disaster. Like I just looked at it on paper. I was like, how do these people play together? I don't know that the styles mesh, especially Levine and, and DeRozan and how much they need the ball. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, they found a way to share the basketball. It flows. And then when they need somebody to close out the game, just give it to DeMar DeRozan. The guy who is basically a Kobe clone, the way that he plays the game. Uh, you know, the, the way he plays back to the basket in that mid range, he just has uh, a, a wide array of moves that just get him the get him to the basket or get the ball in the bucket. Uh, I really enjoy watching the Bulls. I think they're uh, the biggest surprise to me uh, this NBA season. Let's get to the fourth quarter. Finally, on the hot seat. 
and I've been trying to keep tabs on on what you guys have been thinking throughout the season, and the answers uh-huh. have changed uh-huh. about who your MVP is. And I will ask you now, near the end of this season, who is your most valuable player in the NBA? You go first, Randy. Uh, most valuable player in the NBA. Uh, I'm going to say uh, Chris Paul, uh, Phoenix Suns, and I know I'm biased, and and you know what? Uh, too bad. I'm biased. Uh, Chris Paul has done more for this team, especially this season and last season, uh, than any other player has done for their team. Look what the Suns have accomplished. Look what the Suns have done over two seasons since Chris Paul got here and Monty Williams got here and, and, uh, and Mr. Sarver got the hell out of the way and let the basketball people do the basketball stuff. And, and so give me Chris Paul for the win on that one. Jeffrey? Bismack Biombo. Okay. <laughs> but, a, but a real answer now. Though. That's my answer. Leave me you, alone. You, the MVP Bismack of the Biombo. league should Bismack not Biombo. be Bismack a third, a third string Biombo. center, Jeffrey O'Brien. It, can, it can't be that. That's my answer. Bismack Biombo. <laughs> Why? All right, Devin Booker. Fine. Devin Booker. <laughs> All right. that Randy says Chris Paul say uh, either Devin Booker or yeah. Biz McBeam. I, I think just because of games <laughs> missed this year, <laughs> Devin Booker has a much better case than Chris Paul does. But I do yeah. see what Randy's talking yeah. about. Uh, if, if you because the intangibles, if uh, it's it, you don't really quantify that stuff when you talk about MVP, but the intangibles, Chris Paul certainly brings it. Look, I'm I'm going to go Joel Embiid. That he's been healthy this season. The argument against Joel Embiid in previous seasons was the amount of time that he missed. He didn't miss anywhere near that amount of time this season. He's been healthy. He's been dominant. He's been a force. And uh, he's even more polished this year than he was last year, which doesn't even make any sense because he was already great last year. So uh, for me, uh, the answer is is Joel Embiid because hmm. he is the most unstoppable big man wow. in basketball right now. Like, is well, I mean, <laughs> is he though? Or is it uh, old Frenchy French uh, for the Nuggets? Uh, Look, uh, go, go Bear. Go yeah. Bear is a, is a tremendous defensive player. Should always yeah. be in the mix to win defensive player of the year. But as a scorer, Rudy Gobert leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah. And, yeah, and, okay. and here's a stat okay. that I that I saw that just blew my mind. Donovan Mitchell averages two passes to Rudy Gobert a game. Not assists, just passes. Just the amount of times he gives him the ball. That's not the dude you want trying to score. It just... Yeah. It just is. I'm going to get a Bismack Biombo jersey. I think you should. I'm not sure they sell them. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure that you could you probably. Can, you can have one made. Yeah. You just go in and type his name in and type in the number. You'll, you'll get a Biombo jersey. Lost uh, Toby has a winner for four quarters with Keon Rose. Of course he Rose. does. Chew, right? The name. Bismack Biombo. Oh, of course. Of course he won four quarters today. <laughs> Bismack Biombo. Uh, he wasn't even playing. I will accept it. Congratulations, Bismack Biombo, well, for winning four quarters here on. <laughs> My phone, sorry about that. I I thought that was a studio phone. I thought so, too. I was really losing my mind. My new phone is loud. All right, we're going to take a break, and we will be back. It's the Daily Blender here on 1580, The Fanatic. Liberty Mutual Insurance Company presents... Doug. Check it out, Lemu. A roadside carnival. Step right up, folks. Test your strength. Come see the fire-breathing baby. (laughs) Let's fan out and tell people that Liberty Mutual customizes your car insurance so you only pay for what you need. Look! An emo wearing sunglasses! Lemo, you're famous. <laughs> only pay for what you need. Liberty, 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 Liberty. When you run a business, you need to be in control. And while you can't control everything that happens in the world of business, you can definitely take control of your utility expenses with the help of Harman Solar. Give them a call and see how your company can save up to 80% on that monthly electric bill with zero down and no payments for 12 months. Harman Solar is a local family-owned company that uses top-of-the-line equipment. Call Harman Solar, 800-281-3189. That's 800-281-3189. Or go to harmansolar.com. Hey guys, it's Stephen McCollum from the main event here on 1580 The Fanatic. And join me 1 to 2 p.m. Monday through Friday. The Masters have been great leading into the weekend. Who will win it? And we'll look back on it Monday. Major League Baseball opening weekend is in the books. How do the Diamondbacks look? Let's look around baseball. NBA wrapped up their regular season. Playing games are about to kick off. Let's preview and predict stunts opponents. So join me, Stephen McCollum, on the main event. Monday through Friday, 1 p.m. on 1580 99.3 FM, The Fanatic. To celebrate State Farm's surprisingly great rates, we gave this song surprisingly great lyrics. Hey, neighbors, 
when you claim it hard to file. State farms have a switch it up style. Great rates save you cash. So if you come join us, you'll get your coins up. Oh, now you know you can say that though. And you're covered on your ride and your home. For great service on the low, then call up State Farm. It's time to switch it up. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Sun Devil Softball is back in action at Farrington Stadium for the 2022 season, picking up right where they left off last year, ranked number 21 in the nation. The Sun Devils look to build off a strong 2021 season with 14 returners and some star-studded newcomers. Tournament packages and single-game tickets are on sale now, starting at just $12, so don't miss out on any of the action this season. Get your tickets today at sundevilltickets.com. That's sundevilltickets.com. We know how it goes. You can't always tune in and hear your favorite shows and hosts. Hey, look, I'm a loser, okay? That's cool, bro. That's why we post podcasts of your favorite shows and hosts. Listen when you want to. Listen on demand. That is great and, frankly, kind of amazing. Go to 1580thefanatic.com to download. This Mac Biombo. Oh, yeah. This Mac Biombo. We need to have him on the show. I think he should be on the show. See? We just made that the Biz Mac Biombo yeah. song. Right there. That's the whole mix. <sighs> hey, everybody. It's Daily Blender here on 1580 The Fanatic. And, uh, okay, that was a, a rousing edition of uh, Four Quarters with Keon Rose. Big George is on the text line and says, wow, I, I feel like a broken record here. But yeah. Jeffrey yeah. completely dominated yeah, the competition completely dominated yet competition. today. Yeah, Four yeah. downs. Uh, Jeffrey wins by a landslide. Oh, Thank yeah. you, Big George. I, yes, I appreciate is. that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I don't mm-hmm. think the other guys appreciate that no. as much, but we mm-hmm. love it. No, no. Clearly, just, uh, Big George knows what the hell he's talking Truth is truth. I can't I stop. Mean, I, my well, my, my vote would have been for Randy winning four he, quarters. He's but okay. spitting uh, straight fire, but, you know, I mean, what, what are you going to do? Right? You're, you're R- Randy's a, Celtics take was amazing. but you Yeah, well, you're just jealous because not it. Not it. Yeah, not Oh, it. no, Randy. Yeah. You're slight. I'm you're, in. Nah, I'm you're in. totally in. No, now. clearly I'm in. No, obviously. No. Half the left, he says, Spider Mitchell really doesn't like the stifle tower after he g- it gave him the COVID. That, that's part of that relationship, by the way. Like, they, it's weird. They're teammates, but they don't get along. And part of it was Rudy Gobert was so reckless at the beginning of COVID. Gave everybody COVID. Gave everybody COVID. And Donovan Mitchell was basically like, are you serious? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We were all <laughs> like, are you serious? The whole, the whole you- league was, but Donovan was like, the second person in the league to get COVID because yeah. <laughs> my locker's right next to you, idiot. My my question is, is it Spider or Spida? Spida. I thought it was Spida Mitchell. Well, Hefty Lefty spelled out Spider, so that's why. Uh, but but I'm, just I'm hip and cool. I know his, his, his yeah, Twitter right. handle is Spider. Oh, yeah, of course I follow him on Twitter. Spider. Um, Lost Toby says, Randy would have won, but he lost me with CP3 right there. Yeah, yeah. Well, Boomer Sooner mm-hmm. says, Jeffrey, I'm still pitching the Boomer Sooner minute. Uh, I could come up with some really good sports clips uh, in that minute. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, think about it. You mean all about Oklahoma? I just yeah. feel like they're going to be Stuff all oddly or... Sooner related. Yeah, mm-hmm. thanks, Boomer Sooner. We'll put a pin on that. and We'll, we'll talk about it at the, at the next meeting. Just put it right there. We'll talk about it later. How many meetings have we had since you've been here, Keon? <sighs> Not one. I don't zero. Yeah. Zero. <laughs> so it'll be at the next. Next week. I, against the spread says, did I hear that Bruce Jacobs bet against Tiger to make the cut? Dear God, has that guy ever won a bet? Every time I hear his bets on the radio, he loses. He's like mush from the Bronx tale. Fade his bets, fourth dimension. Fade them all. This is your Can I, service a message here on 15. No, I think the if there's a, a, a brand new reason to, to listen to the morning show, and that is to find out what Bruce Jacobs has bet and then do the opposite of whatever it is. Mm. He still owes me a lunch, by the way, for some bet that him and I had in the past. Oh, yeah, because he, he was wrong again with another bet. Yep. Uh, <laughs> Bliss Lay says, Mikael Bridges deserves the play- Defensive Player of the Year award. He can guard all five positions. Uh, well, unlike Rudy Gobert, though. Uh, Boomer well, Sooner says, Mikael Thanks, Bridges Jeffrey. can guard four positions. He, against, like, legit centers, he's, he's not guarding fives. Good point. Well, as you get him a step stool, I guess. One through four is still very impressive, though. Uh, Navy Devil says, I think Bruce Jacobs is now the new Eric Cohen. Mm. He's losing every single bet. I'd say okay. Mm. Uh, new York City Kid says, uh, he, he, he's giving me a script. Uh, LeBron, I want to play with Steph Curry. Steph says, 
I'm good right now. Uh, it still makes me chuckle, he says. I uh, kiss the cook. <laughs> See you next All Star game, LeBron. When LeBron said, I can't go on, was he wearing a dress with his arms stretched out, standing on the bow of the ship? That's right. He's throwing the <laughs> throwing the diamond in with the old lady. <laughs> Good Cat says, breaking <laughs> traffic news, State Route 87 closed in both directions between McDowell and Gilbert Roads. I feel like all of our traffic reports are going to come from people just who, not getting home. Yeah. <clears throat> and also who have lived here for a while. Can I tell you why uh, I really am against doing traffic on the show? Because the longer you sit in your car, the higher our ratings are going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I'm actually... <laughs> I'm rooting for yeah. traffic. <laughs> yeah. If we're sh- if we're telling you how to get yeah. home the quickest way, mm-hmm. damn, we're going to sink to the bottom. Yeah, why would we do that? Uh, it just makes no sense. Blissful Hay <laughs> says Devin Booker deserves MVP. If you take yeah. his stats and the number of wins the Suns uh, have had with him into consideration, Devin Booker should win the award. Well, that you're, you're, was my I, pick. When yeah. they, you know, yeah. for, for I, MVP. I mean, I mean, I could have gone either way though. I, I I just I gave the nod to CP3 because of how this team has reacted to his leadership over the past two seasons. That's all. Devin Booker absolutely should be uh, MVP uh, uh, contender. Yeah, no, but that was my answer, Devin Booker. You said Chris. Well, Paul. you already won. You said Chris. You won Paul. by a landslide. So yeah, no, you I, said what, Chris what, Paul. You wouldn't let I me say, say Bismack Biombo. So come on. No, I would have let you say Bismack Biyombo. It wasn't Keon, me. Well, it was the author of that Keon bit. Is a relentless... yeah, not it. He's well, a guy. Yeah, it's, it's, I'm not. You can say Bismack Biyombo, but you have to yeah. give a basketball reason other than his name is awesome, which it because is. He, tell because me what I do and don't have to do. I mean, I'm an answer in, to you in the segment. I don't even yeah. answer you in the segment. <laughs> no, it's not about an- whether or not you answer to me. I'm saying in the segment, uh-huh. the content comes from your I answers. Think, you I, think I wasn't on the hot answer seat. to him, Jeffrey. I, yeah, I was not on the hot seat. Uh-huh. Okay. There was no hot seat action right there. So, <laughs> thank you. 888-368-1580. It's time now to uh, give a man card violation to oh. Warren Brinson. Uh, that's right. Uh, he's the uh, uh, Georgia defensive lineman that got arrested Thursday night. Uh, where is uh, Athens Clark County? Is that Georgia? That's it, Georgia. Right? It is Georgia. Yeah. It is South. East of Atlanta just, about for about yeah 40 minutes. All I got to do is stop with South. I think we get it. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess this kid, he's, a, he's had a promising career so far and uh, I guess got in trouble due to a TikTok challenge because that's how we get in trouble these days, I guess. Um, he was taking the Orbeez challenge. And when, now what Orbeez is, it's like a little soft gel sort of thing. It kind of like a paintball, but not quite as uh, as big as paintball. And at first I heard Orbeez that, uh, okay, so these must be painless. Turns out they're not. Uh, They can actually leave welts and uh, bloody up your face if you get hit by one. So I guess what happened was uh, Warren Brinson got himself arrested after he took part in the Orbeez challenge, which was to shoot somebody with the Orbeez balls and make sure you video uh, their reaction. Which I'm sure the reaction is always the same, <laughs> you know. What it, the not, hell? Not, yeah, not good. And so I, I don't know any more details beyond that. Uh, he got arrested, and you know, and I think rightfully so. You don't just go up and shoot people, uh, you know, with, uh, you know, I, I guess you're going to say a lower level paintball. But even then, it seemed to leave the same sorts of welts uh, as a regular paintball gun and complete stranger out of nowhere near midnight. All of a sudden you're walking down the street and all of a sudden pop, 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 pop. You're like, that ain't right, man. I was telling Keon earlier when uh, I was a teenager, we got our hands on a uh, fire extinguisher, but we snuck up on people we knew with it. We didn't just go by and randomly somebody uh, with a fire extinguisher, like, you know, some poor homeless guy or something. Uh, we, we went after some buddies of ours and it scared the crap out of them. We all had a nice laugh, but this, no, I think this deserves two things. One, the arrest that he got. And two, it's a man card violation. You don't just do stuff like that. This is just, it's not funny. It's not uh, something that's, Ooh, wow. Look at me. I'm on TikTok. It's just, it's wrong. It's assault. And that's what he got paid for. And that's the way it should be. So man card violation for that guy right there. I, I agree. I mm-hmm. concur. Yeah. Yeah. Do you, are you on the TikTok, Keon? No. Randy, no. are you on the TikTok? Oh, hell no. <laughs> Child, please. I'm 32. No. 
I barely get on the Twitterverse and I have an Instagram so I can see my grandkids and I'm thinking about shutting that down. Yeah, I mean, I don't have any. I swear, once I'm done with this nonsense that we do, I'm, I have no reason to be. I mean, I think you just whatever there everybody's on. I'll get that in case I need to see what my kids are up to or, you know, family members. But outside mm-hmm. of that, I got I got no use for this. It's like fun. my kids are always sending me. We have this family group message, uh, text message. It goes through all of us, you know, mm-hmm. and they're always grabbing these TikTok videos. I, I can't access them. And they're all laughing about these videos. And I can't see a damn thing. Mm-hmm. Like him somehow makes them work for her. But I can't see any of them that come through. Hey, you're probably not missing nothing, man. Not uh, really. Boomer Sooner says, Jeffrey, you were too nice. We used to pull up to red lights, roll down windows with fire extinguishers, and just blast whoever was next oh to God. us. It didn't matter to us. <laughs> That's terrible. I want to ruin somebody's night. <laughs> you know, just do unto others, I guess. Do you ever, uh, uh, you ever do this, Jeffrey? What's that? Yeah, when you're out, you pull up next, and there's a guy in a motorcycle sitting next to you. You know, one of those, uh, one of those guys uh, you know, on the, uh, not the, not the Harleys, not the, not the Hell's Angel types, but, you know, a uh, guy on a motorcycle and he's yeah. sitting there at the light next to you. Mm-hmm. And you always pull up on the right side because that's the uh, that's the uh, throttle. Yeah. And uh, you hand him uh, something. Like, hey, can you hold this for a second? And then the light <laughs> turns green and he's left sitting there holding your whatever what? it is, soda or whatever you have. <laughs> no, well, and he was... just watches you leave and he gets this perplexed look. <laughs> like, what, what is happening? The hell is this? You know? No, I, I can't imagine anybody actually grabbing what you hand them. So maybe, oh, yeah. Maybe yeah, back reach- then. <laughs> hey, can you, hey, can you hold this for me for a second? Because you kind of lean out of the car and give it to them, and they have no choice because it's you're, it's almost like a reaction. They right. just kind of grab it. Yeah, <laughs> no <I'll> share it. <laughs> and then you just take off, and they're holding it. We used to hand out, like, can of beans or something. You know, they, they'd be holding this uh, canned food or whatever. And- right. It's <laughs> just, oh. Dull pineapple slices. That's <laughs> nice. And, what? And their hands off. They're just perplexed. I guarantee you, nobody's grabbing anything from your hand nowadays. Probably nowadays, not. they'll look at you like, no. Yeah, because you, you got to be careful, especially you, you get a few of those. Uh, with uh, what's up next year uh, in man talk. I just gave you the man card violation for Warren Brinson for pulling that nonsense. Yeah. Uh, but man card accreditation goes to a guy, I don't know his name, but a worker at a French fry factory in New Zealand. He's oh, minding man. his own business. He's working a conveyor belt, doing his job. And he's, you know, send the, sometimes they you know, the potatoes come down the line. They got to separate. Oh, the, it's got a little stone here. You got to get that out of there. And so he saw this one thing. He's like, what the hell is this? Picks it up. And he's like, hmm. Hey, Bob. Yeah. Y- you watch a lot of war movies, right? Yeah. Hey, come here and take a look at something. Does that look like a grenade to you? Oh, no. Yeah. A live grenade? Well, uh, he cleaned off some of the mud, and that's when he was like, oh, my God, there's a grenade. And, and so Bob said, yeah, that's a grenade. And so they, they called, uh, uh, you know, the feds, and they brought in the ROM squad. And luckily, it turned out it was a dummy uh, grenade. It was, uh, a, a, you know, one of those training grenades. Because... <laughs> The war, I don't think, hit New Zealand, but, uh, you know, uh, so, but the, uh, the potato chip company wants everybody to know, well, even if you hadn't found it, well, we'd have found it eventually. If it had been a live grenade, yeah, you uh, would. Yeah, you would. <laughs> <laughs> About the time it hit the, uh, you know, the machine, but, uh, yeah. so there you go. And here's the thing about it. He kept his cool. That might be a grenade, <laughs> you know, <laughs> didn't wow. even break a sweat. <laughs> and uh, so, yes, uh, that guy, whoever he is, man card accreditation. So yeah. well done. And then, and oddly, uh, here's man card. Don't do this at home. We have a violation and we have an accreditation. Now I've got this guy. Good idea, but it's illegal. So this guy got tired of people breaking into his truck. I mean, they kept breaking in and breaking in. This was in New Orleans. He got sick of it. So he, he, he rigged a flashbang grenade to go off inside his truck. Oh, next geez. time somebody broke in. <laughs> Oh, jeez. Within a day, somebody pulls up. It's on video. Pulls up, breaks the window, clears the window, kind of trying to reach in. Rather than, I guess he was trying to get the door or something. And <laughs> the guy kind of jumps out of the window, stunned, and stumbles back to the car he jumped out of, and they drove off. So it worked. <laughs> <laughs> but 
Yeah, that's not legal, and you should not do that. The local <laughs> law enforcement said, we would prefer you don't do that. Uh, the liability, and mm -hmm. you're really not helping your interior when you set off a <laughs> flashbang Bang grenade. grenade. That, that's a level of frustration. Like, screw the truck. The next person that comes in here is just getting yep. shocked, and that's it. Yep. Do it would be better if you had some Orbeez and just wait, <laughs> waited in the back of the truck and just pop, 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 pop. Yep. So, so there you go, ladies and gentlemen. Man card violation, man card accreditation, man card ingenuity, not so much man card legality on uh -huh. that last one. So there uh -huh. you go. All right. Well, that is two hours down and we've got one to go. When we come back, we got a whole bunch of NFL for you. And, of course, your guys' text here on the text line. Get up on it. It's Friday. It is one of those shows. 888-368-1580. Be a part of the most interactive sports radio show on the entire planet. It's the Daily Blender here on 1580 The Fanatic. <laughs> From the Augusta National Golf Club, Westwood One Sports presents this special report on the Masters. I'm Ted Emmerich. The second round has wrapped up. Scotty Scheffler trying to run away from the field at eight under par. Charles Schwartzel is tied for second at three under, five back. The South African, who won the 2011 Masters, took advantage of a calmer course earlier today. I think we had a little fortune this morning. It was very cold, but we didn't deal with a lot of wind for say, the first five or six holes. And then the back nine, it was pretty much this. And um, it got hard uh, down the bottom there, around Eamon Corner. The, the wind swirls a lot. And uh, you know that it's there. It's just trying to commit to a shot that was the hardest thing. Schwartzel firing a 369, one of the better rounds of the day until Scheffler and Justin Thomas put down five under 67s. Schwartzel has not won a tournament in six years. You're listening to coverage of the 2022 Masters on Westwood One. This is a metaphor for your business's journey. Sometimes it feels like the course keeps changing right before your eyes. And in order to maneuver it, you need an expert by your side. That's what Dell Technologies advisors do. They have the Windows PC and tech solutions you need to help you get out in front and stay ahead of the game. Call an advisor today at 877-ASK-DELL. That's 877-ASK-DELL. A start to a simpler experience with Windows 11 Pro. Anywhere fans go to cheer on their team, there are behind-the-scenes MVPs, ensuring everything is game-day ready. We see you, Joe, fixing seats so every fan can enjoy every game. And Allie, who keeps her stadium running smoothly from the moment the first game starts to the last play of the season. At Granger, you're our MVPs, and we're always here for you. With supplies and solutions for every industry and 24-7 customer support. Call, click Granger.com, or just stop by. Granger, for the ones who get it done. Scotty Scheffler owns the largest lead heading into the weekend at the Masters since 2015 when fellow Dallas native and fellow Texas Longhorn Jordan Spieth won his first major. Let's check the leaderboard sponsored by Dell. For your small business needs, call a Dell Technologies advisor today at 877-ASK-DELL. Scheffler at eight under par, five better than the field. At three under, it's Charles Schwartzel, Sung J.M., Shane Lowry, and Hideki Matsuyama. Tiger Woods overcomes four bogeys in the first five holes to put down a two over 74 woods one over for the tournament that's nine back so this time last year tiger was in a hospital bed after a car accident that almost took his life and now woods has made the cut at the masters for the 22nd consecutive time at two under par six back of the leader scheffler harold varner the third dustin johnson kevin na and cameron smith from augusta i'm ted emmerich westwood one sports KQFN Tempe. Also transmitting on K25CD Phoenix at 99.3 FM. And K24EU Fountain Hills at 95.9 FM. It's time for the third hour. Alright, people, settle down. Because it's time. Time for what? Showtime. When does it start? Right now. Three, two, one. What? Let's get on with the show. Let's do it. All right, everybody, it's 
five o'clock here on the Daily Blender. I'm your good friend, your radio pal, Jeffrey O'Brien. And now the uh, final uh, numbers and information are in, as you heard from the Masters update right there. The cut line has been cut. And everybody south of it, go bye-bye. And uh, the bottom of the cut, Victor Hovland. The top of the cut, Takumi Kanyanya. So, okay. uh, Victor feeling very lucky to still be in it. Takumi Kanyana, yeah, 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 yeah. Not as lucky. Uh, let's see. Any names there? Jordan Spieth didn't make it. Brooks Kepka didn't make it. Uh, Shafuffle didn't make it. Mm. Uh, are we surprised at all the talent that didn't make it, or is this just a normal thing? Deschambeau out. Uh, Gary Woodland out. Langer didn't make it. Uh, I mean, that was a long shot. Fred Couples, nope. So, uh, anybody surprising you? I am not surprised at Deshambo. I am a little surprised at Brooks Kepka. I, I really thought that he was playing good golf coming into this tournament. Mm-hmm. And uh, so for him to miss the cut this completely, it's pretty convincing. Um, I'm, I'm a little surprised by that. Well, uh, Adam Scott, uh, it was funny because I refreshed my screen. Adam Scott was under the cut line, and then suddenly he's above the cut line. So, uh, something must have happened there in the last couple of holes of his golf to get him where he is. And mm. uh, all right, so I have a dollar bet on Scheffler to win it. And right now he's got a commanding lead. And let's see here. Uh, where's Cantlay in this mess? Is Cantlay doing anything good? I'm scrolling, scrolling. That's not a good sign. He's, he's tied uh, for 19. There he's he is. right with Tiger Woods. Uh, all right. So, and then, uh, of course, I've got Tiger Woods, uh, several different places. So from where Tiger Woods is, how hard is it in the next couple of days for him to climb up into the top 10? Well, it, it wouldn't be too hard for him, especially if he has a good day tomorrow. But you, you heard him on uh, one of the updates saying it's going to be cold. It's going to be windy tomorrow. Uh, the lows, uh, I mean, the highs tomorrow is supposed to be in the in the 50s. And uh, the, the high winds, uh, you add that with the, uh, the terrain of the, uh, of the Augusta National uh, Golf Course. It's going to be a tough day for Tiger Woods tomorrow, and uh, well, but the we'll, we'll have to wait and see. It's going to be a tough day for everybody because the wind that hits Tiger is the same wind that hits everybody else. Uh, you got to well, remember, his ability to play uh, is, is still there. He's still Tiger Woods. So the equalizer is the wind, but you're right. The big question is, does he have the physical stamina uh, to uh, you know, keep his focus and to keep his game going? And, and I will say about the wind, Maybe it's not the same wind, you know, it, because they're not all starting at the same time. Hmm. It may be windier in other parts of the day. And mm-hmm. so it, it, there might be you get lucky and, and the wind isn't as strong for you as it was for the first group, maybe that went out there. So yeah. uh, well, that, he that's, won't be the first and he won't be the last. He's going to be in the middle of the pack. Right. Yeah. Which that's probably so, uh, in the teeth of the wind uh, tomorrow. I mean, I, I would assume in the morning it's not going to be as breezy as it will as it builds throughout the day. Uh, so we'll have to wait and see. And of course there are, I believe six people tied for 10th that are a couple of strokes ahead of tiger. So, you know, if he continues to play really well, he doesn't have to go crazy is what I'm saying to go get into the top 10. Well, here's hoping because all I need is for him to get in the top 10 and I'll, I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll be fine. If he gets in the top five, well then I've even made a little bit of money. Uh, Scheffler has got to win outright or Cantley's going to win outright for me to make that money. So, uh, my big payout guys are gone, <laughs> you know, so <laughs> unless tiger wins the whole damn thing. Um, I don't know. Has tiger been farther back than this and, and won a, a major or even the masters, or is it uh, where he's at right now? Not likely to see him, uh, come from behind and win. Yeah, Jeffrey, this would be, uh, this would be miraculous for him. I mean, uh, uh, what would have to happen is uh, 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 Scheffler would have to really completely uh, blow it. Uh, he's uh, he's minus eight right now. Mm-hmm. If he just goes out and shoots, uh, you know, one under par, he's at minus nine. It's, he's put the, the he's put the pressure on the rest of the field to perform. I mean, Scheffler at minus eight. Uh, his next competitor is five strokes behind him, and that's Shane Lowry. And then you're talking about Tiger Woods, who's at plus one. Uh, yeah, th- that would be a uh, that would be a superhuman uh, 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 opportunity or a superhuman well, event for him. Yeah, to but Scheffler, listen, there have been guys 
with big leads who have self-destructed before. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't even remember the, uh, the guy, I think it was the Masters, this tin cup guy. I saw this, him, his caddy was Cheech, and he came out and uh, he, he just, you know, he was playing mm -hmm. really well. And then suddenly mm -hmm. uh, he just could not let go of uh, hitting a certain shot a certain way. And then, of course, mm -hmm. he lost everything. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that was the 1992 Masters. What was this mm -hmm. guy's tin cup? I don't remember his name. Uh, yeah, uh, I, 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 I do I have uh, Paul, <clears throat> Paul Laurie coming back from uh, 10 shots down to win the 1999 Open Championship. And there's some other uh, guys who've come back from eight shots down as well. So it's, you know, not impossible. But Scheffler could fall. Tiger could lift. And uh, well, OK, let's well, just say yes. Tiger, maybe he's not going to win this whole thing. But, uh, you know, guys like Kevin Na, guys like uh, Hideki Masayama. I mean, oh, these abs guys yeah, absolutely. Uh, people that are uh, that are within five, uh, even six shots of uh, Scheffler right now. Anything can happen. I mean, he could go plus four tomorrow and be at minus minus four. Uh, meanwhile, Shane Lowry, Hideki Matsuyama, Charles Swartzel, uh, some of those Kevin Na, they could have phenomenal days where they 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 shoot four or five under, and suddenly uh, those guys are right there. So, uh, but for Tiger Woods at plus one, it, it would it, it, Tiger would have to have an amazing day, and there would have to be a a complete meltdown by Scotty Scheffler on Saturday. And Saturday generally is known as moving day for a reason because it's a high scoring day. That's when everybody starts to make a move. We'll have to wait and see what happens. Anything can happen, Jeffrey. And, Anything and can happen. Scheffler is number one in the world for a reason. So, well, he uh, he won me some money in the Phoenix Open, too. Remember mm -hmm. that? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and that was just absolutely by accident. <laughs> I, you I got was, the wrong Shuffle. I was trying to uh, bet on Shuffle. Yeah. Hey, all right. So let's talk about this win that you're talking about. Now, I, this is the most interested I've ever been in golf. So uh, I imagine this will go away after the weekend. But uh, I mean, last uh, time Tiger won this thing, I was interested. So I guess this is the only uh, Yeah, you can say I follow golf religiously like once a year. Anyway, uh, so uh, the wind, Randy. Mm -hmm. Now, they they wouldn't stop the golf over the wind. Right. It's only if it rains or lightnings. It, well, it, even if it rains, uh, as long as there's no electricity anywhere, no lightning in the air, uh, not going to be an issue. Uh, uh, they'll go out and play in the rain. That's that's not the issue. The issue is the uh, keeping the players and the and the uh, the patrons safe. So uh, if there's elect if there's electricity, yeah, they're going to shut it down. But the wind, I mean, uh, today was getting up to 35 mile an hour gusts. Uh, it could be uh, stronger than that tomorrow. I don't know. I'm looking on the uh, I'm looking on the the weather app right now to see yeah, we what it's see looking about like. the storm so. uh, level I guess more than the <clears> wind <throat> level I guess to see because Tiger could use a day off you know what I'm saying so if they stop play for a day and they pick it up the next day and, and you know mm -hmm. like a little bit of lag might help his cause I don't know yeah just yeah. saying. 888-368-1580. Uh, Roy McAvoy, thank you, Pro Dog. Yes, Roy McAvoy it was uh, in the mid '90s or late '90s, and he was playing. And, and uh, wow, just he should have he should have gone the easy route. Once it was over, he just couldn't help himself. It was yeah, uh, it was hard yeah. to watch. It's very hard to watch. So the the weather tomorrow they're calling for, uh, for example, uh, when they tee off tomorrow morning. Uh, let's say they go off at eight o'clock. It's going to be forty four degrees. A, small, a slight chance of rain, sunshine in the morning, uh, but they're looking at wind gusts, uh, 10 miles an hour, 12 miles an hour, uh, 15 miles an hour by the afternoon. Clouds are starting to move in in the afternoon, 16 miles an hour, uh, and, and that'll continue on through the end of play. And it's only going to get up to about 57 degrees. You add the wind in there, the humidity, uh, the chance of rain. You just don't know what's going to happen, but that's what they're going to be dealing with tomorrow on the course all right so i guess this is my last question and this might have to go to a member of the fourth dimension at 888-368-1580 uh the big question is when you have had a broken leg and let's say you have got metal in your legs or some sort of a traumatic uh, break or shatter or whatever is it worse when it's hot or is it worse when it's cold you know, if Tiger's walking around that there with like uh, metal in his legs and he's still rec like a, barely a year away from the incident, uh, is the cold going to really hurt him or no. does it not? It, does it maybe help soothe? You know, I, I which mm. is worse for that kind of injury. I, I honestly don't know because it never happened to me. So if somebody out there has sustained such an injury or just knows 
I guess, you know, we all know that, uh, oh, grandma sure feels it when it gets humid uh, or, uh, you know, so-so feels it, oh boy, when it's cold. So I don't know, you know, what temperature would Tiger prefer, you know, well, for it, that injury? I, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing that he would prefer it to be warmer because it's not just the, the cold. Uh, if he goes off, let's say, at 11 o'clock, you're looking at uh, 45% humidity and 52 degrees and it being partly cloudy. I, I'm thinking he would rather it be 65, uh, uh, drier humidity, uh, no chance of rain and sunshine. Because if it's cold and it's, and it's that high humidity cold, well, then it's, it's uh, sort of a, a, a wet cold. And I, I don't know that that's what it's, he wants. It's so miserable. I'm glad I moved out of Georgia. It's that wet <laughs> cold, man. It's, it's, I never it's not of a Georgia is a cold place. Well, it, it, it's it's not just his leg. Remember, he's had a surgically repaired back before uh, the auto accident. He was recovering from yet another back surgery, so he's got multiple injuries in his back. He's had a broken leg before. He's had the knee surgery before, and now he's got uh, all the rods and pins in that right leg and in the left leg that was also damaged in the wreck. I don't know what kind of repair work they had to do there, but uh, he, he wasn't, he was in a hospital bed for a reason. He, he didn't have any legs to stand on for a while. I would assume he would like it uh, a, a bit warmer and, and maybe uh, 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 no wind uh, on this course. And, and it's going to be tough. Georgia's closer to the coast than you think. And the elevation is what tends to keep it cold as well. So the wind just blows through. It's, it's awful. Let me just say, I, I, again, if I ever have a chance to get Tiger Woods on the show, or if I'm just hanging around, uh, I'm going to make sure I throw refrigerator magnets at him. I want to see how many I can get to stick. <laughs> <laughs> so, Tiger, which, which leg was it again? I, uh... I'm not even asking. I'm just tossing them at him. Because <laughs> just... I, I know, I think I remember it's his right leg. So, <laughs> you know, if he's in line but in front of me, he's going to feel like, <laughs> he's going to think somebody's tapping him on the back. No, that's me. <laughs> Trying to throw them like ninja stars. Refrigerator magnet. <laughs> Kiss the cook says the wind at Augusta is difficult to read. While the flag may not move under 15 miles an hour, it swirls above the trees. Oh, uh, yeah. It's worse yeah. when it's cold. You feel it in your bones and your joints. And by the mm -hmm. way, it can happen. Greg Norman lost five strokes and three holes and uh, lost himself the Masters. Yeah, yeah, sure did. Senior Wakenbeck says, "Hey, I've had back surgery. It's better in the heat. Uh, cold sucks." Yep. Hefty, Meth, Hefty uh, says uh, Jordan Spieth melted down one year at the Masters. Remember that? Yeah, and he hasn't been the same since. And uh, Hefty says, I finally figured out what Justin Thomas looks like. <laughs> a thumb with a face. <laughs> uh, the guy is the skinniest person with a double chin and a beer gut that I've ever seen. He'd actually make a great Muppet. Yeah. A thumb with a face. We used to have a kid that worked for us. <laughs> Every time he, I said, <laughs> we need a picture of you. And the kid was like, oh, right here. I'm like, Okay, could you try like maybe a better picture? He did it again. <laughs> You're just gonna look like a thumb for the rest of your life. That's a hey, thumb. He looked like a thumb. Uh, Blissful Hayes says, "Who knew they sold grenade flavored potatoes?" How about that? I didn't. Know Explosive that. flavor. Uh, Lost Toby wants us all to know that he hates with a passion runner on second in extra innings. It's stupid. You. you can't yep. convince him otherwise. Yep. He says, "Thank you for coming to my TED talk." He's done. <laughs> Good cat says, not it. Not it. Not it. Oh, see, now, now Keon has elevated his game, Randy. Yeah, gonna, he stepped yeah. his game up. Big George says, looks like Randy's pick of Brooks Kepka failed to make the cut, huh? I think Randy mm -hmm. uh, said this was going to be his year. Whoops. You know, George, uh, Jeffrey's going to go on vacation at some point. And when he does, We'll just see how many times I read that on this date in Big Georgia sports history. <laughs> what, what a wow. That we'll is just, an incredible threat. Just, you keep <laughs> you keep pounding those keys and sending them in. And but it's, it might make the show. Maybe. And to be fair to Randy, um a lot of people thought Brooks Kepka was gonna play, but I thought Brooks Kepka was gonna play I a whole lot better. I don't need your defense, Keon. This is between me and the seven foot marshmallow. <laughs> Yeah, he's he's Randy is a bit more brave now that he's in Carlsbad, California. But sure, okay, go ahead, Randy. Have Listen, that. if if he makes me mad, I'll kick him right in the kneecap, right in the Ginobili's. No, uh, the kneecap. His Ginobili's are much higher than mine. Yeah, that you'd mine. have to like jump on yeah. a table or something. Yeah, that that would be stupid. Hefty Lefty says, or he could be in a Spy Kids remake as the Thumb Soldier. I have mm. no idea what you're talking about. 
Yeah, Spy Kids. You'd have to watch the movie to get it. But yeah, they were they were thumb soldiers. Mm -hmm. I only know that because I had kids that you know liked the thing. It was uh, on in my family room as I, I would. Watch. I was a kid when it was on, but it's if a bad. Children even knew how stoned the grown-ups were when they were making their family yeah, oh, yeah. cartoons. Yeah. Now, yeah. Listen, even when we were kids, we were watching Spy Kids and going, "This is some strange stuff." Yeah, the, the Spy Kids movies, uh, that was uh, that was a bad acid trip. Pee Wee Herman, that was some sort of a hallucinogenic <laughs> oh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that was hallucinogenic. Oh, my God. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, so, you know, now it's okay. Before it was weird. Now it's okay. What am I talking about? Well, uh, you know, paying attention to a high school kid uh, in, in sports, you know, unless you're in high school sports, like our friends at the AIA, well, it's kind of strange, kind of weird, a little bit, kind of weird, a little bit. And it, knowing that Arch Manning was, uh, you know, getting to be in high school age and being a quarterback and turning out to be very talented. Uh, I mean, uh, Peyton and Eli both say Cooper Manning was the superior athlete over both of them until he got hurt. Uh, it was just Peyton and Eli actually got to move on and, and play in the NFL and win Super Bowls. Uh, and, and they wonder, gee whiz, if Cooper hadn't got hurt, what would he have done? Well, uh, you're starting to see that because the spawn of Cooper's loins. That's right. <laughs> Take a moment with that. Uh, Arch Manning has been tearing it up out there. I don't think that's the right music for this. I'm talking about a teen spawn of his loins. Yeah. Oh, Still weird. Just, you told me to take a minute, did you not? Uh, not that minute. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, so uh, Arch Manning is uh, he's playing lights out, and uh, you know his uh, uh, you know his prospects are wide open. He could go anywhere he wants. Every college on the planet wants him there. Alabama, Florida, Georgia, LSU, Old Miss, Texas. Uh, those are the the ones that are uh, being seriously considered. And now he's made a surprise visit to Virginia. Mm -hmm. And the connection for Virginia is his mom is a graduate of UVA and uh, his uh, aunt and Peyton's wife, Ashley, also from there. So uh, and then, of course, Peyton Manning gave the valedictorian uh, address in 2014. Arch Manning's sister, May, she's already a student there. So, you know, Arch Manning's going to take a serious look at this and uh, he's he's checking it out now. So. I got to tell you, I just almost wish the Colts would tank <laughs> at the right time. Uh, but uh, you're not bad enough. God, I wish we were bad. <laughs> See, every, every year it's the same thing with you, Jeffrey. And yeah. you knew Arch Manning was in the pipeline. I know. And every, we're just one quarterback shy of a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. Oh, if we could just get, oh, my God. See, now mm -hmm. don't you feel like, uh, I wish they would just sell everything off and start playing. Jacksonville Jaguars style football. See what but I mean? The pr problem is he's at least three years, two, three years away. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I would, uh, I would almost wonder if Cooper is going to force this kid to finish all four years, you know, and probably. Uh, and uh, well, I mean, I guess you could, but uh, a, a lot of guys, if, if they can get out in three, if the draft stock is high in three, you just go and work on the degree later. Didn't, uh, I thought Eli and Peyton both are, were four-year guys. They were, um, but uh, we're we're getting to that point in college football where you're a top-tier quarterback. You have a good season. Go ahead and just cash in on that if they put you number one at the top of that draft board. Just just well, go ahead. Arch Manning Mike, doesn't need to cash in. I think right. he's pretty well set. Yeah, and <laughs> it's, yeah, but still, I mean, just just to have the, the the opportunity to be the number one overall pick in the draft. It's not even about the money for for someone like him. It would just be about we got number one overall picks in this family. I'd like to be one. Bruno Baller says, did Arch Manning Sr. go to Purdue? That's what's coming to mind here. Uh, let me just tell you something. Um, I, I've got the scouting report on Arch Manning. And uh, Arch Manning, uh, the first or second, I don't know which one he is up there. Archie. Uh, old, old man Archie. Yeah. Um, the, 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 the grandfather. Yeah. As good as he was, as good as Peyton was, as good as Eli was, uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, this kid, uh, the scouting reports are ridiculous. Uh, there's only one dig I've heard in the entire scouting report, and I'll tell you what that is when we come back. It's the Daily Blender here on 1580, The Fanatic.
This is Brent Musburger's Action Update on 1580 and 99.3, The Fanatic. Heads up, sports bettors. Right now, you can try v All Access free for 30 days with no credit card required. Visit v slash free month to sign up now. It is the final weekend of the NBA regular season, and the Phoenix Suns continue to sit as the favorites to win it all this year. Their plus 280 odds to be the champions are far and away the best odds of any team, about twice as good as the defending champion Milwaukee Bucks, who have the second best odds, paying out at plus 600. And then the Brooklyn Nets, despite playing in the play in tournament, right behind the Bucks at plus 650. After that, the Miami Heat pay out at plus 900, while the Celtics and the Warriors. Warriors are each paying out at plus 950. For the latest odds all the time, visit vcin.com. I'm Matt Pauley on Arizona's sports betting station, 1580 The Fanatic. From the Augusta National Golf Club, Westwood One Sports presents this special report on the Masters. I'm Ted Emmerich. Halfway through the 86th Masters, and Scotty Scheffler looks like the top-ranked player in the world. Scheffler, 8 under with a 5 under 67 today. He's five shots clear of the field. Harold Varner the third is six back at two under. Varner adapting well at his first Masters. Great experience, but like the best experience is playing well you know at the end of the day that's what I want to do uh that's very selfish and I'm totally okay with that uh I just want to keep doing what I'm doing you know it's only going to get tougher you know everyone's going to keep talking about it but I just want to have a chance to win Varner from Gastonia North Carolina about 175 miles to the north of Augusta and Varner has shot back to back one under 71s you're listening to coverage of the 2022 Masters on Westwood One I am Robert Strickler. My wife Joyce and I have been married for 53 years. Certainly one of the really important things in my life are our children and our grandchildren. I am essentially a writer. I've been involved in communications in the media. I've been an avid fly fisherman for at least 40 or more years. I've been taking Prevagen on a regular basis for at least eight years. For me, the greatest benefit over the years has been that Prevagen seems to help me recall things and also think more clearly, have a crisper ability to remember and think through things. And I enthusiastically recommend Prevagen. It has helped me an awful lot. Prevagen, healthier brain, better life. Robert Strickler is a content contributor for Prevagen and real user. Based on a clinical study of subgroups of individuals who are cognitively normal or mildly impaired, this product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Tiger Woods will play the weekend at Augusta on a right leg that had a rod, a plate, and screws put into it after his car accident from last year. Woods won over par. He's nine back. Only 15 players are under par after two rounds. Let's check the leaderboard sponsored by Prevagen. Prevagen is the most recommended memory support brand by pharmacists. World number one, Scotty Scheffler has tied the largest 36 hole lead in Masters history. He's eight under and up by five. The previous four players to hold that lead went on to win Jordan Spieth in 2015, Raymond Floyd in 1976, Jack Nicholas in 1975, and Herman Kaiser in 1946. Charles Schwartzel, Sung J M, Shane Lowry, and Hideki Matsuyama. All three under par. At two under, it's Harold Varner the third, Dustin Johnson, Kevin Na, and Cameron Smith. Spieth, by the way, six over par. He misses the cut at the Masters for the first time in his career. From Augusta, I'm Ted Emmerich, Westwood One Sports. The Masters returns to 1580 The Fanatic this Wednesday through Sunday. There it is. A win for the ages. Listen for the Masters updates throughout the day, giving you all the highlights from Augusta and keeping you up to date with what's happening at the 86th Annual Masters Tournament. Is it this time? Don't miss a moment of the Masters. All weekend long on 1580 and 99.3 The Fanatic. Blender here on 1580, the fanatic. Uh oh. I know Randy. George is on the text line. He's on the text line. Uh-oh. Says, did Randy just call me a seven foot marshmallow? Yes. 
Wow, that's a low blow, Randy. Yes, I may be big, but I ain't no marshmallow. Don't make me drive five and a half hours to Litchfield Park to give you a piece of my mind, buddy. Come on. Come on, Big George. You're married. You got a little baby now. Come on. <laughs> big George. It happens to all well, you, you have attachments to where you are. You're not Come driving on. five hours. My wife <laughs> always says when the uh, NFL players, uh, when they end up having the babies, uh, it softens them and they don't have as good a season. She pointed that out with uh, all sorts of guys. Ke- uh, 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 Johnson, David Johnson, uh, Russell Wilson, uh, Patrick Mahomes, uh, all sorts of guys where it always does seem to coincide with the birth of a new baby. Suddenly they're all kinds of 10 ply soft. So just saying, big George, you may you know, be you a know what I love you. You're, you're the biggest, uh, you know, uh, a guy I know, and uh, you know I love you and everything, but come on. Come on. I mean, come on now. Kiss the Cook <laughs> says, it's Big George. He says words like jinkies. Next thing you know, he's, you'll claim he's a dainty eater. Yeah, kind of a little soft in the, you know, phraseology too there, George. Uh, I mean, it's all right. It's, uh, you, you've made a correction, but now you'll, you'll drift back to being in the normal range. You may have overcorrected for a wife and a baby. Yeah, saying things like jinkies and, you know, being a little soft. It's okay, but you, you've got to right that ship. Get yourself back to good, man. Get yourself back to manly. Uh, but it was really more about the fact that uh, you're calling out old uh, Randy White there uh, for saying that, uh, you know, Brooks Kepka, you know, was going to have a good year and rubbing his face in it, rubbing his nose in it like a poop on the carpet. Mm-hmm. Come on, Big George. I know you don't mean it. You're just having a rough time. I understand. It's a whole life transition thing. I get it. I get it. Yeah. Big George is clearly <clears throat> transitioning. I had uh, I had six of those little miracles uh, and, and, uh, and a wife to take care. I had all of that. I understand. Look at me. I used to be a 175-pound uh, chiseled steel and sex appeal. Now look at me. I, I look like a dad. I look like the end of a Q-tip. That's what I look like. <laughs> Big and George. it's happening to you, Big George, you big giant marshmallow. You come here. Let me give you a hug. I'll just sink right into that dad bod godness of you. Oh, he's not in hugging mood right now. He says, I'm going to bring that six week old baby with me. He'll be strapped to my chest when I show up to your door, Randy. Mm, that's a good place. I can't think of anything, <laughs> any better place I'd rather be than strapped to your chest, Big George. That's a man guard violation, Big George, uh, because you can't punch a guy who's got a baby on him. No, <laughs> you know, you, it's like an, an uh, immediate human shield, which yeah, a little unethical to use a baby for that. Yeah, yeah. Well, you, you seven foot terrorist, you know, that ain't right. Now, what would you rather be known as a seven foot terrorist or a seven foot marshmallow? Come on, Big George. Come Kathy on. Lefty says Big George would be more like a s'more. Uh, he's hard and crunchy on the outside, followed no. by a smooth middle ending no. with a soft marshmallow in the inside. No, he's soft and creamy all over. That's Big George. <laughs> <laughs> well, now I can't read the scouting report for a high schooler after you said that. I'm going to wait on that for a while. <laughs> you Shuffle guys know that it. to the middle of the pile. No, it's I, there was probably a time he was, uh, you know, he was uh, as chiseled as a mountain, you know, made out of granite. I mean, nothing got by him. The baby's only hey. six weeks old, Randy. Yeah, but how long did it? I mean, I mean, let, and he didn't carry the baby. Come on. So I don't know come why on. you think he's. <laughs> I didn't lose a step when I had. I had a, my uh, first child at twenty three. Can we just talk for a second? Yeah, just just for a second. Mm-hmm. Big George used to be here in Arizona, and he was a lawyer here in Arizona. Yeah, yeah, he was a big deal. And this mm-hmm. uh, this little gal came into the twinkly eyes, you know, mm-hmm. uh, stolen away from us. Now where is he living? Okay, yeah. so now are we any of us really afraid of Big George anymore? Yeah, five and a half hours away. No, not no, as much. No, no. Mm-hmm. So, I think bad. we he's can all agree he's big, soft. George, he was P whipped. Now he's B whipped. Yeah, oh, that's baby. Oh, yeah. yeah, he's baby whipped. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so yeah. all right. Good meeting. Open season on Big George, everybody. <laughs> oh, that is that how? <laughs> I didn't say that. That's not what I said. I'm just gonna step back and <clears throat> let it happen. Oh, big boy. George is is my guy. He's always been my guy. But come on, Big George. Big George says, damn, only my wife was allowed to say I'm soft and creamy all over, Randy. I didn't realize you saw me that way, though. <laughs> you know I do, big fellow. This is getting really uncomfortable for me. Um, 
Senior Wakenbake says, I doubt the babies uh, wear blocking and throwing. Uh, I don't blame babies. Well, I'm not blaming the what? baby, but you can't hit but, a guy who's had the baby in his hand. Especially, no. especially a seven-foot guy. The, the be baby would be all you could reach. Right. Which, you sh- which you can't. Well, I mean, I, in Big George's, I mean, honest, I'm 5'8", so if Big George comes after me, uh, I'm going to bruise the hell out of his kneecaps. I, I'm going to wear his thighs out. You know you what know I mean? What? I'll never get up to around his head or neck area, but uh, but I'll, I'll work over where he's at, like a heavy bag, like mm-hmm. a giant heavy bag. I'll work mm-hmm. that over right there. I mean, I'll leave marks. Yeah. Uh, people will be questioning, what the hell were you doing? Hey, you got all those marks all over you. Don't wear shorts, but, uh, you know. His thighs will be bruised horribly. <laughs> yeah. No, the thing is, it is Big George. So yeah, the baby, is, he could swing the baby and beat you with the baby, and the baby would still be okay. I don't know. That's a big baby. He might be coming with a weapon. Not, not The baby's a weapon. Well, I, I, I remember uh, back in the day when I did watch uh, some actual wrestling, Andre the Giant used to do that big club, you know, down on guy, the, the hammer fist down on the top of a guy, and he, it would just rattle everything, and then he would fall over, and, and Andre the Giant would win the fight that way. Mm-hmm. I, I would imagine that's what probably what Big George, back when he was back in the, you know, back in the day when he was, uh, you know, cut like a damn diamond and as hard as a rock, you know, and nowadays, eh, not so much. I don't think he would do. Sorry, that. I'm just over here, uh, sort of picturing baby nunchucks. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if he had twins, <sighs> he's popping you out of the baby. <laughs> he's got them tied together with like the diaper bag or something. Hefty Lefty says Jeffrey's really living up to that monkey picture you put up, Randy. <laughs> I know. That's what I told you guys. That's why I, that picture was perfect. It's what I do. All right. Do you want to hear the scattering report on Arch Manning or what? Yeah. Please. Yeah. I can't wait. Uh, now, here's the thing. Randy, you don't need to be uh, too excited about this because mm-hmm. you're not no. going to be in first round pick, uh, no. first pick uh, position. No. It'd be a couple of years. I don't know. Maybe if things outside go really the realm bad. of possibility that the Cardinals yeah. would ever pick first in the draft. You're right. Well, they did yeah. the kind of two times in a row, but I don't think from here out. I mean, maybe I don't Maybe You have a shot. Uh, the Colts are always mediocrely just hanging in there. So I'm not mm-hmm. going to have a shot. Keon, you might have a shot at our it, it, it might. We might have a shot. But here's the thing. I'm not even concerned about that. I'm more concerned about this. Texas. I, I want him to go to college at Texas so he can play as quarterback for That's Texas. Gonna, well, that is uh, one of the teams on the list. Yeah, he, so he visited earlier. I'm, I'm hoping. But um, I don't think any of his family went to Texas, did they? No. That's yeah, probably no. not going to happen. Well, you know. Anyway, yeah. so here's the report on him. Uh, recruiting analyst Gabe Brooks. I'm just going to read it uh, to you. Uh, it's story time, kids. Uh, good height and overall frame potential. Relatively lean athletic build and carries existing weight well. One-of-a-kind quarterback pedigree. Natural pocket passer. Pro-style feet. Good functional athlete with terrific off-schedule instincts and playmaking ability. Junior season has shown improved running ability in design situations and continued dangerous scrambling effectiveness. Looks first to throw and on the move, but capable of gaining chunk yards and converting money downs with his legs. He repeatedly has shown the ability to throw accurately outside the pocket, including when throwing across his body. Uh, There's a whole lot of Patrick Mahomes right there in what Mm -hmm. I've read so far. Uh, Calm field demeanor, yet poised and competitive simultaneously. Uh, Quick, natural release, accuracy amongst his best traits, processes quickly and picks apart defenses in the short to intermediate game displays requisite vertical arm strength and in the bucket touch on deep shots impressively pairs velocity and touch to fit throws into zone windows elite pocket awareness sixth sense ability to feel pressure to avoid rushers good size but still filling out his frame which will continue to raise the ceiling on his arm capacity here's the only dig does not face elite high school competition but feel for the game and pedigree will translate regardless. One of the nation's top prospects, regardless of position, likely uh, multi-year high major starter with first round NFL draft ceiling. Have you ever heard a better scouting report? Are you sure you're reading uh, Arch Manning's? It sounded a lot like mine. Uh, No, (laughs) it says Arch here, but I understand why you think that. Yeah, okay. Golly, I can't. No, no, I that, is, that is the best scouting report. And I'm a nerd. I read them. Mm-hmm. That, that is the best one that I have ever heard. Ever. So, so uh, there's for, only for you, one downside. So, for you, Keon, uh, life would be great if 
Arch Manning first went to Texas. You win a national championship or seven there while he's there. <laughs> and then he goes number one overall, and it's the Washington Commandos that pick him up first overall. And now he's your Man. franchise quarterback uh, for the next uh, 20 years. Uh, oh. Gets his brains kicked in. Uh, they have to remove his spleen because he gets sacked all the time. <laughs> hey, hold but, on. Turned dark. But the team Whoa. is going to – they're going to get Arch Manning. Uh, he's just going to have the, the whale beat out of him. Uh, wow. in, the, in the first several Maybe years. For a and then uh, out of there for no apparent reason, we'll walk off the field with $100 million and say, I'm never doing this again. This, this seems Andrew like more Luck's of a son. shot at Jeffrey than it is. No, at, at no, this is, like no. that. Because uh, no, the, the offensive no. line for Washington has been pretty, pretty good the last few years. It's been one of the functioning parts of that team. So I don't know that he's going to get his brain. Well, I, I just, I know does. the commandos are not, not a, uh, a well run organization. Yeah, you know they're they're trying to fix all that. So I don't I don't Listen, know uh, if Arch Manning goes to Texas and then goes to Washington Football Team. I'm going to buy you know, a lottery ticket yeah. the next day. You can't say anything to Keon. Keon is not going to hear any digs <laughs> uh, on his team. Uh, he's not going to hear any sl- shade that's thrown on the Nationals or uh, shown on, on the Wizards or anyone else. Uh, the only thing he's going to hear <laughs> is your mouth saying Arch Manning. Arch Manning. Uh, I, you could be saying. Man, your wizards suck. And he's just going to smile and go, Arch Manning, Arch Manning. That's it. And, and first off, in your scenario, is a national championship for Texas, which, yeah. Look, well, seven. All, all, all I'm saying is, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's that's the dream right there. I, 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 okay. I will be invincible. Right. There is conversation with me at that point, will be pointless. I wonder how many teams are going to see him coming <laughs> and, and just knows that. Oh, oh, so many, so many. I mean, we've already heard the reports of, you know, uh, teams that are that thought that they were going to lose their number one overall pick and got scared. You're going to see a coach uh, yelling at a quarterback. What are you doing? Completing passes. <laughs> Come on, coach. It's just an accident. I didn't mean to, but you told me. Make it look good. Hmm. Arch Manning. Uh, all right. Enough of this. Uh, Happy Lefty says, yeah, it sounds like that kid was made in a lab. Uh, it's, uh, you know, it's the, tell you what, though, I mean, the the kid doesn't have the awkwardness of all the other Mannings of, uh, Cooper, uh, Peyton and Eli. So I don't know who Cooper's wife is, but she must be responsible for what the kid looks like (laughs) because he doesn't have that, that sort of, uh, well, look like always kind of staring into space. That sort of dazed, aloof yeah, look. Right. He doesn't have that. Well, it's a good thing he has money. Look, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, we have other things that we need to talk about. There's some wide receiver news. There's some quarterback news. I don't know if we're going to get to all of it or not, but uh, we will certainly uh, give it a shot. Uh, you haven't heard yet what you have to say about the Stefan Diggs extension. Uh, I think, you know, it was a work to clear some cap space, but also to take care of Diggs. I mean, uh, was this a good deal, Keon? Yeah, it, it, it was it was a good deal. He's one of the uh, more productive receivers in the league. He's got a very clear, strong and obvious connection with Josh Allen. So it, it, it kills a couple of birds with one stone. It, it, it lets you restructure that contract and make Stefan Diggs happy. Uh, but it also makes your quarterback happy. Uh, you know, that's his favorite target. That's the connection that they have. You, I mean, you got to have Stefan Diggs. I, I think even with the price being as steep as it is, because he's got the most guaranteed money. Uh, in football, just short of Tyreek Hill. Um, so w- with that, uh, you, you have to say a little bit of a risk, but not too much because he's been productive for them. I think he's earned it. And of course, Josh Allen, that's his guy. Big George says, I'm coming back to Phoenix in three weeks, Randy. So my family can see the baby. You come on ahead, you big fluffy man. You, I'll give I'm, you a big hug. He's going to keep it a list and I'm going to pay visits to those who wronged me. All right. You come on ahead, big fella. You come on ahead. Kiss the cook says big George and a baby strapped to his chest. Great. Seven foot alien. <laughs> it's like a little, little hands go like this. <laughs> Senior Wakenbake says the vision of you guys fighting, maybe 10 seconds of punches in the next 10 minutes, leaning on each other. Pan- <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> that is the most coherent thing. Senior Wakenbake may have ever said. Uh, all right, must take break. We'll come back with on this date and Big George's marshmallow. I mean, uh, Big George's sports history. It's the Daily Blender here on fifteen eighty. The fanatic.
We're planning a trip to Spain later this year. But our Spanish is... It's pretty bad. So we're using Babbel. Babbel's conversation-based method teaches you real-life words and phrases. And with Babbel's interactive bite-sized lessons, you'll remember what you learned. There's no easier way to learn another language. Ahora hablamos español. He just said, now we speak Spanish. Babbel, language for life. Now try Babbel for free. Just go to Babbel.com. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Do you struggle with occasional nerve aches, weakness, or discomfort in your hands or feet? Try Nervive Nerve Relief from the world's number one selling nerve care company. Nervive contains alpha lipoic acid to relieve nerve aches, weakness, and discomfort, and B-complex vitamins to support healthy nerve function as you age. Live your life with less nerve discomfort with Nervive Nerve Relief. Learn more at NerviveHealth.com. If you're an IT professional looking for an opportunity with great benefits and the freedom to creatively solve problems in a career with great growth potential and a team environment, look no further than Affinity Technology. Serving the Valley since 1992, Affinity Technology is looking for a level one tech to develop and deliver excellent solutions and outstanding customer service. Visit ATECHAZ.com forward slash jobs and get started with your future today. That's ATECHAZ.com forward slash jobs. Hey everybody, Mark Asher, back to tell you about my great friends over at the Lund Mortgage Team. Are you seeing what is going on in the home buying market right now? Unbelievable. Not enough inventory, and there is a ton of demand. Some of these homes are getting 30, 40, 50 offers on them. How are you going to stand out? How are you going to differentiate yourself from the other buyers who are in line? I have a way. Use the Lund Mortgage Team. Lund Mortgage Team is locally owned and operated with over 20 years of experience right here in the Valley. They have a great reputation and it is a trustworthy pre-approval. And on top of that, they are quick. That's one of the things you got to come equipped and be ready to buy. So what you need to do is make that first phone call to 623-875-9940. That's 623-875-9940. Get that pre-approval going and then get yourself ready to go buy that home of your dreams. Go online, lundmortgageteam.com or call 623 623- 875-9940. Join Choices for the annual Walk for Life, May 6th and 7th at Dream City Church in Glendale. The weekend kicks off with a concert by Jordan St. Cyr. Then hear a powerful message from Dr. William Lyle, OBGYN. Admission to the concert is free with a suggested donation of diapers and wipes. Then on May 7th, join with hundreds for the Choices Walk for Life. Check-in is at 7.30. The walk begins at 9. Register at choicesaz.com slash walk for your free t-shirt and all the details. Before becoming a professional announcer, I took the announcer road, which forbids me from misleading listeners. Just wrap your heads around the reality of that. That means I speak the truth when I say you can listen to us on your smart speaker. Just say, listen to 1580 The Fanatic. Gabby Glender for a Friday, April the 8th, uh, day number two of opening day for baseball. And uh, FanDuel Sportsbook is uh, glad that it's baseball season. They want to turn K's into cash, big hits into big wins for you. Right now, new customers can step up to the plate with a risk-free, risk-free first bet up to 1000 bucks. Sign up to place your first bet, and FanDuel will refund you up to $1,000 back in, in site credit. If you don't win your bet, so let's say you put some money on, uh, oh, I don't know, maybe put some money on the uh, the Boston Red Sox, and they lost to the Yankees. You're gonna it depends on what you put up there, but up to a thousand bucks, you're gonna get it back in uh, site credit, uh, and you can do that uh, uh, only uh, FanDuel Sportsbook. Remember, uh, great promotions every day, great opportunities. For you to uh, take a small amount and make it a big win with their parlays. They've got same game parlays. They've got multi-sport parlays. I mean, they've got all these great opportunities uh, for you to make some extra cash. Also, the app is safe. It's secure. And when you win, you get paid fast. Uh, So see for yourself why FanDuel is America's number one sportsbook. Uh, Download the sportsbook app now, the FanDuel sportsbook app. Use promo code Randy1580. Get started on your risk-free first bet up to $1,000. Again, that's Randy1580, the FanDuel Sportsbook app. 
Let them know I sent you. You got to be 21 or older, present in Arizona. First online real money wager only. $10 first deposit required. Bonus issued as a non withdrawable site credit that expires 14 days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See full terms at sportsbook.fanduel.com. Gambling problem? 1 800 Next Step or text Next Step to 53342. See, Jeffrey, if if you would have used uh, the FanDuel Sportsbook app, like I keep trying to tell you to do, mm-hmm. hey, you would have got uh, up to $1,000 back. So I, I do have the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Yeah, but uh, if you would have done your first bets on on the Masters, mm-hmm. uh, think about the uh, the site credits you're going to be getting back and the more uh, you could have done. See what I'm saying? Well, I used the DraftKings and I got some odds boost, but you're right. That does not going to do me any good if I don't win. But that's mm-hmm. the way uh, Josh Applebaum had uh, uh, taught us. Yeah. Uh, you know, have more than one sportsbook app and then see who has the best deals. And so, yeah, if I failed, it was, I failed to check uh, the fail no, app to see what was what. You so, didn't fail. I'm just giving you other opportunities. Like, just a big fat failure. You're not a failure. That's what Randy no. says. I'm a big no, fat no, failure. I never said, no, I, I, n- nothing of the sort. You said fast Boy, failure. Uh, be, between Jeffrey you O'Brien. and George, uh, you guys are really attacking. You know, I'm, I'm going to, I know, feel very violated. I got in next attacking. after George fights you. I got mm. next. Yeah, well, I'll, I'll kick his ass and I'll have to kick yours in. <laughs> well, uh, I, it's good you have a nice dream. Uh, yeah, dream life. Is, yeah, it's good that just goals. shows you Randy's got a dream catcher right over his bed, and it catches <laughs> lots of them. Uh, I don't Big have George, no dream catcher, pal. <laughs> Big George says, did Randy get insurance and site credit for his bet of Brooks Kepka winning the Masters? See what I mean, George? See what I mean? Really? <laughs> <clears throat> You know what it's time for? You know, it's time for on this date in Big George's. I'm not history. playing the music. You know what, Big George? Uh, hey, hey, it. hey, your pal Jeffrey there. Oh, yeah, Jeffrey the wins. Jeffrey wins again. Oh, Play Jeffrey's the, the greatest. <laughs> Back in the year 1974, Hammer and Hank Aaron at the age of 40 broke Babe Ruth's home run record when he hit his 715th career home run off of Al Downing of the Los Angeles Dodgers. In the fourth inning before a national television audience and 53,775 cheering fans at Atlanta Stadium. With a fireworks fire in the home run, flew 385 feet and cleared the fence. There you go. Uh, that's a nice one right there, Big George. Well done. You can't even say anything bad about that. It's a good one, Big George. <laughs> He's not bitter at all. Jeffrey. Don't drag me into this fight. I, I had nothing to do with you and Big George squabble. That's none of my business, you know? Don't be mad. <laughs> <laughs> awkward. Truly is a Friday show. It truly is. Um, Speaking of awkward, uh, I, I don't know what is. Does Dwayne The Rock Johnson just need tax write-offs? Because I still don't understand why he's involved with this XFL nonsense. Uh, him and Danny Garcia. What in the hell? Is, they've unveiled a new logo for a league where all the games are going to be played at a high school stadium in Alabama. Why? Why, <laughs> why do I have to think this is going to actually be a real thing? It's it's not. It's It's just not. Oh, but see, Jeffrey. Come on now. The postseason games for the XFL will be in Canton, Ohio. Uh Uh-oh. Well, you didn't say that, did you? You mean home of the one NFL game we don't like? Mm -hmm. Canton. That same Canton. Okay. Just, all right. Just checking. I don't need the USFL. I don't need the XFL. But I I like Dwayne Johnson. And I'm trying to figure out, uh, what are you doing? You, you, you can't afford this. You can't afford this. Uh, nobody can afford this. Nobody is set up correctly for this. And if you think playing all your games in one town to minimize expenses is going to be enough, you are wrong. Uh, the play is not going to be at a level that anybody cares about. Why? Because you're also now competing for players with the USFL. XFL, USFL playing roughly the same time, if I'm not mistaken, right? So what are you doing, Rock? You're just throwing money out the window. And all I can think is these guys need tax uh, write-offs. That's why he had that giant head of a T-Rex sitting behind him when he was on the Manning Brothers show. Uh, he, he's just buying up anything he can to try to take a loss on it so he doesn't pay a bunch of money in taxes. And if like Wesley Snipes rummaging through garden, uh, they all have garden trash during his shift. So 
I, I don't get it. I don't, I don't know what, I don't know why, but uh, yeah, please stop. When are they going to stop? I mean, do you guys, how do you choose between poop and throw up? Because that's what this is. USFL and XFL. Poop and throw up? <laughs> Would you like a bucket I mean, of poop or a bucket well, of throw up? That's a bit extreme. <laughs> No, which wow. one would you choose? The poop or the throw up? If you had to choose, you have to have one. Wow. I choose neither. Uh, yeah, no, it's, it's like, uh, it's like war games. The only winning move is not to play. I I'm not, I'm not, I'm not choosing the USFL or the XFL. I'm just not watching. That's what I'm doing. I'm choosing not to play. Randy, are you watching in this garbage? Probably not. No. Look, you, at this point, you've got, you've got baseball on. Yeah. You're going to have the NBA playoffs going. I don't. <laughs> I don't need discount football. Mm. I just, I, I like the rock. You know what I'm saying? I, I like uh, his movies and, and his, you know, same face all the time in every movie. I like, I like him. He's fine. He's a nice guy. Seems all right. Yeah. Yeah. He sang in a Disney movie that our little girl likes to sing all the damn time. But this is just a waste. Hefty lefty says Jeffrey doesn't need the USFL. He doesn't need the XFL. Hell, he doesn't even need the AAF. What he needs is a quarterback for the Colts. You are correct, sir. Wow. You are correct. But, you know, Matt Ryan will do for the moment, I think. Uh, oh, that's a good point. Happy Lefty says, nobody can choose between poop and throw up, but dogs. They'll always choose the throw up. It's a good point. Wow. Mm, that's a good point, yeah. But some of them do also choose the poop. I, I may not make it to the end of the show today. Hmm? Why? What's wrong? I may not make it to the end of the show What's with wrong? these poop and throw up. That is a very good uh, analogy there that the USFL and XFL is basically choosing between poop and throw up. Oh, Which one would you want? Choose one. Go ahead. I choose to move on to a new topic. All right. Let's talk about uh, <laughs> Grambling. Doesn't have to do with poop and throw up. Grambling State volleyball coach Chelsea uh, Lucas uh, didn't like what she saw with her players. She's like, you know what this is? This is like choosing between poop and throw up. Watching oh, oh my play. God. You girls are horrible. And so she took all 19 players aside and cut them and said, uh, you better find another team because in four months you have no scholarship. That is cold. That, that is cold hearted. Yeah. And uh, the school backs are up. The athletic director backs are up. Chelsea Lu Lucas ain't effing around. <laughs> she she has what? no team. There was no, there was no, there was no games to make this. She three practices and she cuts the entire squad. Good night. That is a pair of, oh, uh, that is some stone cold. Mm -hmm. She's a badass. Yeah. She's got ice water in her veins. Yes. There you go. And, uh, <laughs> Yes, yeah, so I guess that she also knows there are some other players coming. So it's not, you know, just, you know, these are the ones from last year, you know. And, uh, boy, some of these girls are just rocked by it. They're like, well, you just don't see that coming, do you? You don't see that coming. And, uh, yeah, so uh, message to anyone else, if you go to Grambling State, Chelsea Lucas is your coach, you better bring it all to practice. You better bring it all to practice and uh, do everything this person says or you're going to end up working a part-time job to pay for your schooling because she ain't messing around. I've never heard of that. Has anybody ever cleaned house on a football team like that? Have they ever cleaned house on a basketball no, team no. like that? No. Because it, it, it would be borderline impossible to, to get anybody to play for you after that. Uh, it's just like, wow. Yeah, if if the coach simply thinks I'm not trying hard enough, I'm out the door. I, I don't know that you're going to get a whole lot of people, in, especially those sports being revenue sports, um, jumping at the opportunity to play for that. And I think most coaches are aware you, you might put your foot down on a few players, all the players that takes, that takes some, uh, some intestinal fortitude. Do not park in her parking spot. No. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Bruce no. Arians cut a guy. Chelsea Lucas yeah. might launch you into orbit. She'll cut you. That's what I think. <laughs> Uh, number one Rattler fan says, Hey, why are you showing no love for indoor football? You give six minutes to XFL and none to the Rattlers. Holy God, Rattlers fan, Wait, take a break, man. but also we, Rattlers fan. We, we spent six minutes, we spent six minutes telling you how much the USFL and XFL suck, right? Which that's is the choice. Go watch the <laughs> Rattlers, okay? Go watch the indoor football league, not the XFL or USFL. So, 
Jeez. Uh, Randy's chuckle says, Keon pick poop and puke, uh, you know, Yankees and commandos. Boomer Zuner says, thank you so much, Randy. I don't know why you guys get off on these pet tangents. It's not very fun for those out there who don't care about pets. We weren't talking about pets. We were talking about buckets of poop and uh, throw up. <laughs> don't tell me how to do a show, Boomer Sooner. You can go find something else. Go ahead. Turn wow. the dial. Uh, Big George uh, says, thank you for reading on this date in Big George uh, sports history. Hopefully you're not taking any days off anytime soon. Since it seems like Randy's going to boycott the entire segment. And I'm sorry, Randy, but Jeffrey did win four quarters today. Mm-hmm. Half the left, he says, Chelsea Lucas has got some ice cold ovaries. <laughs> ice cold ovaries. Never heard it that way before, but all oh, right. Lord. Just, oh, boy. It's probably best we avoid but, all of that. I just, I just feel like the temperature doesn't matter, but I, I yeah, don't know. Yeah. I don't know. See, for men saying you got a big pair, that's a compliment. For women, they don't want you bringing any attention to any of that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, I Betty th- White did say, why would you say you got a big pair of balls? She's like, eh, it's more impressive to have a vagina. Those things take a pounding after pounding after <laughs> pounding. That's a Betty White quote. I didn't say that. <laughs> wow. Rest in peace, Betty. I Look it up if you think I'm kidding. Wow. She said that. It does sound like something she'd say. Well, there you go. There's a Friday show for you. Ladies and gentlemen, that's it. We're done. And uh, it is the ending this show deserved, to be honest. It is the ending we deserved. I didn't think it was so bad. Uh, I lost Shelby says, people who don't care about pets definitely choose both poop and throw up. So there. Hmm. I'm going to tell a guy if he has to like pets or not. I'm going to talk about whatever the hell I want to talk about. That's just what we do. All right, guys. Have a great weekend. We'll see you Monday. It's the Daily Blender here on 1580, The Fanatic.